<clears throat> Good morning, Foxtrots. Welcome to Shrine Talk episode 25. Of course, joining me today is the cutest rat VTuber on Twitch, Yatra. Hello! Hi, greetings! Uh, cheese to meet you. It's me, your local commander, Cheese Yatra. I am happy to be here. Uh, I hope you're having a good day. All right. That's before me. we proceed, <laughs> though, I want to I want to give a uh, a brief time for Yatra to properly introduce herself. So yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Um. Hi. Uh. My name is Yatra. I I been a streamer for about a year. Around October is when I debuted. Um. Before I used to be. Mostly just like a, an art, like a freelance hobbyist artist. Um, but uh, nowadays I just kind of work and I just draw on my free time and I stream as well. Um, for the most part, I um, picked up streaming because um, my friend um, made and rigged an artist for me. And I'm like, I guess I should try out streaming. And then here I am. Um, I've been really happy to make a nice little community that likes to play fighting games with me and just hang out. It's been nice. Um, let's see what else. I really like to. Um, I'm very, I'm very. I'm always really happy and open to meeting a lot of new people. Um, I like having like a wider, broader perspective than like what I like i my normal life so that's always really nice um i also really like playing monster hunter and shooters i'm not i didn't grow up playing them actually but i started to pick them up more recently and same with like fighting games and just being a bit more of a gamer in general oh, yeah nice nice yeah. <laughs> thank you <laughs> nice right, so for episode 25 our topic for today is, as you can see on screen, it's going to be fighting game sequels and how we think they should be done. Now, just to give a quick rundown of the objective or the goal for the talk. So, we have newcomers like DNF Duel and um, Project L coming out next year. We've also had Nick do an All-Star Brawl and... Um, multiverses recently but more importantly big titles like you know Tekken, Street Fighter, Guilty Gear, KOF, Soul Calibur they are still like dominating the landscape with sequels but we shall discuss how sequels have succeeded and of course how they have failed. Now the goal is to show our standards as well as our thought process and what we expect in future sequels because I would like to think that in the video game landscape, making a fighting game sequel is not as simple as making a video game sequel in general, I would say. So we're gonna sort of um, put that out here and make it clear for you guys uh, how we think whenever we like set expectations or list down like our needs or wants for fighting game sequels. And lastly, Everyone has their preferences, of course, but we believe our point of view is what I think most of you can relate to because we are more um, on the borderline of, um, I would say, casual and hardcore mm -hmm. fighting game players. So we are really like, I would say Yatra and I are like very passionate when it comes to fighting games, but mm -hmm. um, we can relate more to the casual side than the competitive side. But we have to some extent um, tested the waters of the competitive side so we see their point of view as well uh -huh. okay so before we get to the meat of the topic I'm gonna ask Yatra first what's the first fighting game franchise you got into um I think it, funny enough it was Guilty Gear Ooh. um I told this story before a long time ago Mm. But um, 
There was this laundromat that was close to a pizza place. And the pizza parlor had a little physical arcade cabinet of like Guilty Gear Action Core. Wow. So when I would do the laundry, I would get the quarters, go to the pizza place, put my quarter in, and then play on the physical cabinet. And I'm like, oh, this game is sick. I love this music. And I can, and I would like, I'm doing my laundry because, um, place i had where, where i lived at the time didn't have like a a unit where i could put, do laundry so i would always go there like every week so i would just play on the physical thing and i would just kind of go through the arcade mode and um, um yeah but like i was like very young so i just thought wow this game is cool <laughs> and i just played because it it's nearby but like I didn't really get into fighting games till the pandemic. So my first game that I got into Oh wait, after I told that story, my friend gifted me Guilty Gear Strive, which was a full game like full sixty dollar game after I told that story. Mm. And she said, No more no more boomer gear. You play this one now. And then ever since then I start playing it on stream. Are. And then I kind of just fell in love with okay. it, yeah. A a very good Kaimane Yatra. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, for those who are not familiar with um, American culture, as someone who has visited the States, um, there are restaurants that, oddly enough, do have arcade cabinets of a variety of arcade games. It's not just fighting games, but, like, I remember um, one of the first times I went to the States... I was eating at a Fuddruckers with my relatives. <laughs> and then for some reason, I'm like, wait, they have Crazy Taxi here? What? <laughs> because for those who know, who only ha who haven't visited countries outside the States, um, it's not really a common thing for like um, burger or pizza joints to have arcades in it. I mean, even like, those are already like extremely rare and like the only place I've seen that is a shaky sneer a university where I used to study it's a pizza joint it's a shakies and they have a full-blown like built-in arcade in there I'm like wow this has a real American vibe to it but yeah <laughs> for those who are unfamiliar that yeah um it is a thing in the states to have a to have a little arcade or a few like maybe two to three arcade cabinets and a pizza joint or a burger joint but like at least for southeast asia i don't think that's very common because um i would say we have arcade ar arcades not arcade machines in particular like restaurants or whatnot so those are a lot more common than uh, what uh, Yatra, and I guess most of our our mutuals and communities in the West are uh, used to. Yeah, which I find really interesting because I'm just like, so you guys have like um, physical like places to play arcade games when I was just like, it was like a Guilty Gear machine close to like a Pac-Man machine in this pizza place. I know, right? And, <laughs> which was yeah, very like, interesting. And I remember the Fud Ruckers where I went to, it was yeah. Crazy Taxi, and then right next to it was Daytona, and like, mm, <laughs> okay, interesting. The one next to that was Time Crisis, I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's so interesting, because, um, um, actually, I don't know if I talked about I always, uh, I actually am a 90s kid, <laughs> mm. so I talk about in my streams, I'm like, um, I, uh, I used to live in a small town, and um, there was like a locally owned, family owned like arcade that had like a bunch of um, small um, arcades, so there was like a lot of beat em up games, my favorite was like the Simpsons beat em, Ooh. the Simpsons game, <laughs> the Simpsons arcade awesome. game, cause um, my um my dad and my brothers would go fishing but um i was um i was sort of afraid to go because it was kind of like a little too 
a little too much investment for me mm. so my dad would just give me a bunch of money to change out the machine i would just play a bunch of arcade games with my other female cousin because <laughs> uh. i uh i was the only girl in my family and the person who owned the family arcade they also had someone in the nearby which was my cousin <laughs> ah, so she was always kind of near i'm like hey um my family my, my family's going fishing you want to like play games with arcade Damn. so that's what i did <laughs> yeah and then uh it was interesting because i liked the uh, fighting games from a casual level but i never really quite got into them till like again till a lot Recently. later in life all good well, so you started with Guilty Gear WoW. Yeah. For me, I <laughs> um, started with Tekken. I started with Tekken. Cool. Just like a lot of Filipinos because... Um, like, tech Philippines is considered Tekken country. Like, majority of anyone who plays fighting games in the Philippines plays Tekken like... Like, it's the only game that exists. <laughs> um... Let's see, funny story, because basically this is when um, Brother Nari started playing Tekken, and this was Tekken 3. And he needed, like, a real human opponent. He couldn't just use, like, a training dummy or a CPU to practice. So he uh, asked me to, like, you want to give this game a try? It's a fighting game. I'm like, okay, sure, why not? And, um, I just, the re but the first character I picked was Paul because I found his hairstyle very funny. I'm like, how the fuck is his <laughs> hair sticking up that high, that straight? Pretty cool. And, um, to that, to this day, to this day, Brother Nari sort of regrets having me pick up Tekken 3 because he hasn't beaten me ever since. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't beaten me ever since. But, however, know. like, he has... Might sound a little dark, but he has used me to, like, uh... Oh. Sort of, uh... Take money from his friends, because, like... He he would... Because uh, he, he, he and his clique of friends were, like, fighting game enthusiasts. And not just fighting games, but, like, they played a lot of Magic the Gathering. But whenever they did play Tekken, a lot of them would like to play Spets. And we're talking like... Oh! And thing is, like, um... These were... A lot of my brother's friends were, like, part of the elite class. So they would bet, like, a good chunk of money. Like, 20, 30, even 40 dollars sometimes. And, um, of course... Um... My brother was like somewhere in middle of the skill level of their group. Mm -hmm. And whenever he get beat hard by like the best one, he'd be like, bet you you can't beat my little brother. And they're like, <laughs> you're right. It's like, how much? And my brother would confidently say, bet you a thousand bucks you can't beat my brother. And just for those, for those any context, a thousand pesos is around $20. So yeah, he was that confident in my skill. And yeah, like the funny thing is the first time he did that, my brother's friend was like very like I'll go easy on you little guy. I'm like <laughs> Yeah, he tried to go easy on me. First round I perfected him. It's like, okay, your little brother knows how to play. He didn't win the second or the third round. I basically threw him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, what's <It> rough? <laughs> a true. I a humbled true. his ass. Oh my god, that's uh, that's such like a, this is, uh, it's kind of what I love about fighting games is like um, hearing the stories about yeah. like the underdog. And the and funny um, thing is that little experience did kind of change him. He he took Tekken a lot more seriously, and. <laughs> He like we fought several times after that. He still couldn't beat me, but like he saw me in a different light though. <laughs> and yeah, That's, like uh, yeah, he became I, a little of mine. <laughs> do, do you still talk to them? Do they still play? <laughs> I mean, uh, like 
sometimes whenever whenever I stream, my brother does like tell them like, "Yo, Inari's playing Tekken or something. If you wanna watch, <laughs> you wanna watch him." And apparently, they still get they still get amazed whenever I do stuff in Tekken Seven or other fighting games I do play. Oh Anywho. my god! So yeah, that's, that is the that's... franchise that I did start with. I did start with Tekken, and then I ventured out into Street Fighter, and then Soul Calibur, and then Guilty Gear, Blaze Blue, and I think my very first KOF game was KOF 15 for sure. Yeah. So yeah, I've ah, tried yeah. a lot of the big fighting game titles. Oka. Um, have you always been a franchise loyalist, or have you tried other franchises? Mm. Uh, since uh, I kind of got back into fighting games, I have tried um other games, but uh, my my pop my issue is always like uh, fighting games are always very expensive. Yeah, we have discussed <laughs> and, um, this several times in previous episodes. Like, yeah, one of the major gates of fighting games that they're not cheap. They're not affordable. Yeah, they are not the cheap. Least yeah it's very um it's definitely the price point because um i want to buy and invest time into the game but um um uh, i i don't i hate to use dnf duel as an example but um no, i did fair. buy dnf duel and um i was very interested in playing it it and then um it's already from other people it's already kind of dying <laughs> Which is very unfortunate. And I was like, I find this game like really fun, and I think it was really interesting. And I'm like, why are not enough people playing it? I wonder if it's just like, I wonder if it's like there's not enough like information about the game coming out, or is it just because like Arxis dropped Bridget, or you know, I would uh, say Hype Lumina put in, haha, funny cat. Um, might be a, um, lots I, of different factors. I think the biggest factor that a lot of people agreed is poor marketing. Mm. Poor marketing for that game. Mm. I'm gonna take this opportunity to say, get Soul Calibur. It's on sale. <laughs> a lot, a lot of us has, has picked it up for the past couple of days. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'll I don't know what thing. I don't know what demon from hell made the net code of Soul Calibur, but for some reason I can play with, with Senna who is East Coast. And it's very playable. It's very smooth for some reason. I don't know why. Interesting. Okay. I um if it's actually um the price point isn't a um a matter that is definitely much more of a better investment, I'd say. <laughs> So yeah, if I got Soul Calibur, it's 85% off. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned uh, Soul Calibur, because uh, I had a friend um, recently give me Tekken. Mm -hmm. and now Tekken 7, sorry, um, mm -hmm. to be more specific. So I have another fighting game I, I would like to play. And um, I kind of also want to... Um, and I know... Uh, I saw a tweet, mm -hmm. somebody recreated you in Soul Calibur 6. <laughs> Oh yeah, my um, my friend, uh, Meat Puppy. Yes, yeah, he's also I saw that. I'm like, hey, that's a good use of Soul Calibur Six. Yeah, <laughs> he, he made me in game, and I was like, oh, Yo. that's really cool. Thank you, I appreciate it. Oh wow. I mean, um, Chaos made Ninja Poo. Uh, um, Senna made. The, oh my. I kid you not, the Sunny water bottle, a Gordon oh. Ramsay oh. Kool Aid Oh my God, man. I'm have to, I'm have to look at your vods. <laughs> yeah, you have to look at my vods. I so have... like I meant, I mentioned it before. I'm fortunately always usually sleeping oh, when good. you stream. So I'm like, okay, I'll check this out. There Among are... Us, you said? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah a friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One of our mutuals had Among Us and even Fall Guys, and the funny thing is that um, there are Tekken outfits, and I literally, oh. mm -hmm. like, there's this one character who has a very similar fighting style to Xiao Yu. I gave mm -hmm. her Xiao Yu's outfit, and it fits. And the funny thing, the grappler of the game, technically everyone's a grappler, but like the dedicated mm -hmm. grappler of the game, 
Astaroth, I gave him King's outfit. He had the gloves, the pants, the boots, and even the King mask. So it's funny <laughs> seeing King in Soul Calibur with a giant axe sidestepping with Korean backdash speeds. And I'm like, this is great. What? Oh my god, this sounds... This sounds ridiculous. This sounds like a fever dream, but I kind of love it. Dude. <laughs> Just get it 85% off, just fucking get it already! <laughs> the limits of character customization is literally only your imagination and creativity. And I think someone who has background in art will have no problem creating whatever the fuck they want. Oh yeah, um... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I forgot to- I know the topic is about fighting games and such, but yeah, I am been an artist, a hobbyist artist for about like yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 or so I years. I don't mind yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I've been a uh, anime artist for about like 10 or so years, so I've been like... Mm. Uh, the thing I always liked about fighting game characters is like their designs and silhouettes are always really fantastic. Yo. And they always really stand out. So as an artist, I always like... I want to do that. Now I play them. I'm like, oh, these games are fun. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess yeah. This game. All right. I'm sold. I'll put this in my cart. <laughs> 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 this game is actually like okay. Yeah. I don't know if I want to make it Among Us, but we'll see what we we'll do. See. You, after this talk, you can quickly watch some of my clips or my yeah, I will, uh, bots. definitely. I will Go check ahead. them out. Yeah. I hope someone clipped the Among Us because that's oh yeah, somebody did. Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, somebody did. Somebody did clip the Among Us. Thank you. Somebody did clip <laughs> I don't the know. Among Us. Yeah. Oh, right. sounds. So you okay. have. So you have tried other fighting games. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, other franchises, but have you? Mm -hmm. Would you say that you're still like? leaning more towards Guilty Gear or have you like balanced out um with other franchises? Mm. I feel like maybe I feel like it's because like uh I work and I have to go to sleep mm. and then I have to you know I have like limited free time mm -hmm. to do things but like hmm that's a good question I do like love Guilty Gear but I would like to try playing um other fighting games so I can sort of uh grow like a it takes quite a bit for me to learn um, uh, system mechanics because they're always a little different. Mm. Um, I just think it's because I, I, I want. How do I download more time <laughs> to learn the? I really quite. Um, I recently went to go back and uh, play um, uh, Ex uh, Rev Two Exart oh. and I actually quite like it. Mm. Uh, I like how the movement feels in the game compared to Strive, which mm. feels a lot more linear, which is weird to say because I quite enjoy it. Mm. Um, hmm. um, I also I want to try to revive DNF the <laughs> duel. But like, uh, I also haven't invest. I would like to invest more time into playing it and find like other people because I feel like um. I don't know. It's a good. I think it's a good game. I You'll just have a better one. chance trying to revive Soul Calibur. <laughs> <laughs> I like, we, we will be able to play that. And Yatra, you can recreate Kai. I'm pretty sure you can recreate Kai in that game. It's doable. Oh, no. Uh oh no. Oh, it's I, doable. I, should I? Oh no. I, how do I play? Um, I since I'm like um. How do I explain? Uh, for Kai, the reason why I like Kai so much in particular, he reminds me of a lot of one of my OCs. Oh! Like, in a lot, a lot of ways, which is to not intentional, but I just mm -hmm. was like, um, so my original character, he's also like a war orphan, and then he kind of, you know, rises through the ranks and becomes like a king. Mm -hmm. And Kai is also very similar. And they both have like thunder powers and such. And I was like, oh, wow, this guy's like my OC. I want to there... main this guy. <laughs> nice. So that was like um, why I ended up gravitating toward him because he reminded me of something I I made, which is very similar. But mm -hmm. like, you know, um, like, like, I mean, like, Fighting game characters are still like 
someone's OC is like Daisuke's OC, but you know. <laughs> yeah, more of the spark is a banger. But yeah, that's it why is. I end up playing him. Uh, I feel like when I play, um, was I also play uh, Blaze Blue Central Fiction? Mm -hmm. Um, I played it. Uh, oh, and uh, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. I played it because um, they, my friend, I have friends that are very nice, and um, they give me fighting games, and they gift it to me, and I really like S in particular. I would like to play Blaze uh, Central Fiction more because I feel like um, I I like mm. the system mechanics in the game because it has very personalized things for each and every individual character which i think is like really neat mm. Mm. like uh i don't play um or, like when i play around with characters like uh nine for in particular when she go goes into like a uh, overdrive mode there's certain things you can do with her that she can only do that are character specific to just her which i think a lot of newer games don't really tap into that like uniqueness of the character mm. which um is um a little i don't i don't know if it's like a you know maybe like the stricter on the time they have to release the game and stuff but i found like uh when i go back to play older games there's always like really small unique charms or like certain system mechanics i think like oh see really cool or like i like how in this game like this small segment of dialogue says so much about the lore it makes me more interested and involved in the game like i like that a lot of newer games kind of like at least when i try them out they're kind of um i feel like they're a bit rushed hmm. so i really appreciate when like i go back to play older games there's like a lot of care and love made into it maybe not as like profitable market wise but you know oh, yeah. i still feel like the passion and like i as an artist i understand <laughs> sometimes you're passionate about something and maybe it's not gonna sell well but you care about what you make and i think that's what i really appreciate about it i mean recently i was playing final fantasy 10 and 10 2 mm -hmm. again i'm like wow this this game world buildings probably the best in the ff franchise and oh my god the characters were all lovable and shit oh my god Oh, for F I haven't played uh I haven't played FF10 in a, like ages. I haven't. Um, do you think it would? Oh, we're a little so we're sorry, track no, okay, this. Okay. No, no, okay. No, okay. Uh, do you think it aged well? <laughs> it has aged very well. Very. Because uh, well. I always um I don't know like my um when I when I want to go back and play like games I'm very nostalgic about. I always wonder if I play them like now that I have more experience playing other games if it will taint my enjoyment of the game because i realized like wow this mechanic is really bad <laughs> or this will make you appreciate the, the time you had with it if anything mm. you know it will also make you appreciate like the game now like mm. if any if it had sequels are like wow we started with this and now we have you know current modern mechanics pretty fucking cool ah uh. yeah that's basically it well, let's see. As for me, being a franchise loyalist, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't call myself a franchise loyalist. I would say that I have maybe a bias towards Tekken because like, I, I really did start with Tekken. And in terms of like, um, overall hours spent playing a fighting game, I would definitely say, like, without second thought, I've spent more time playing Tekken than any fighting game I've ever played. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I have played, again, I have played Guilty Gear Plus R, Rev 2, Strive, Street Fighter 3, 4, and 5. I've only played Kira 15. Let's see. Um, I have played Skullgirls. Uh, also, plays Blue. Not Central Fiction, though. I think I played... Continuum, Continuum Shift. I think that was the title of the uh, game. I have played MVC two, MVC three. I have not played Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite because that game's trash. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fair. Um, I have played the uh, Mortal Kombat nine, ten, and the newest one. Oh, and okay. um 
Yeah, I did play a lot of Smash Bros as well. So yeah, I've played a lot of franchises. Uh, are you when you play them? Are you like a character, like loyalist? No, I feel like <laughs> I'm not oh, a you're not. Loyalist, oh, I'm no. I'm definitely a character loyalist. So I, I just feel like when I find a character, I, I gravitate. Mm -hmm. I really stick to them. <laughs> Fair. Like I honestly play whoever's really fun, and hmm. I usually have maybe a roster of like three characters I find the most fun to play with. So I'm not really. I wouldn't consider myself a character loyalist. Oh, I see. I'm definitely in the cam. I find someone, I stick to them like glue. <laughs> nice. That's that's cool. That's always cool to see. All right. Yeah. Um, have you ever shelved or temporarily stopped playing a franchise for an extended period of time? Um, I think, I think it's when I, I think it's when I play ranked, <laughs> like ranked competitively in a fighting game, cause um. I prefer enjoying them like uh mostly suit like casually which i think is i find them most enjoyable mm. but when i um if i ever take breaks from game it's usually because um Work. uh i get listen ladder anxiety i guess is the word what anxiety? Um, oh la ladder anxiety from like ranking up if that makes oh, sense ladder anxiety okay. yeah ladder anxiety i get anxiety because um sometimes um uh are you, are, you, are you familiar with the Guilty Gear Strive like uh, ladder system? Of course. Kind of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cause I, uh, I did. Um, sometimes I, I would try to get. I wanted to personally for me. I wanted to at least try getting into Celestial once with Kai. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I was like, uh, I just want to do it. But then it's like sometimes I would get, get close, and then I would get back down, and it would like, okay, I'm not. Uh, I'm gonna take a break. It's not good for me mentally. <laughs> I mean, I have been in contention for Celestial several times, and mm -hmm. even getting into Celestial's not e Celestial's not easy. I think yeah, that's the it's one. Very hard. I think that's the one flaw of Celestial floor. I think there is no like there's just one floor for Celestial, and that's like, in my opinion, that's just bad design. Because there you, should be like more. Yeah, there should be several layers of celestial because you could have you could have people who are fresh in celestial or you could have literal um like Korean StarCraft level APM players on celestial and you're like why am I fighting against these guys again? <laughs> yeah, so, it's a yeah, like it's that's a the one mixed? major difference. It's the one major dif it's the one major like sticking point of celestial for me. You can have people who are fresh in that in celestial or people who have been celestial for a long time and the difference between the two night and day. There is no discernible similarity between the two and I think that's a major flaw for celestial. So yeah, that's a uh, I, I do understand the uh, ladder anxiety. Yeah, is yeah the lang ladder anxiety is real. And then um, sometimes I would take a break. Um, um, when I started playing like uh, fighting games, uh, I had another group of friends I would play with. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to, b before I, um, I was very fortunate. I had a very, when I debuted, I had a nice, uh, kind, loving community. And they're very... They helped me raise funds to get me an arcade stick because uh, I would do sets and try for like maybe three, it's like three to five hours actually because <laughs> I was in the process of learning and um, my hands were really start to hurt and then um, I would want to draw because um, drawing, I don't know, art has always been like a important part of my life so I wanted to be able to continue doing it and um i was like this is not it's not like playing on a controller and and playing these type of games is not gonna work out for my um the betterment of my health and for my hands <laughs> i need to take care, good care of myself so um i did a donation goal and um everyone helped me get like a fight stick and um it's been great to alleviate 
the pressure <laughs> from my hands from play. It definitely um, is a learning curve to relearn the game entirely on a um, arcade stick, but it definitely feels more comfortable to when I, you know, I mentioned earlier flashback <laughs> to when I, I played um, uh, Axon Core on a physical cabinet. So playing on like a something that simulates that actually feels like more, I don't know, oddly nostalgic, but feels more like right to me to play th these type of games that way. Mm. Mm. And it just felt right. When and you then... take a break from like, mm -hmm. in this case, Guilty Gear, do you play other fighting games or you just do something else entirely? Mm. Should I do something else entirely? <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I do, you see, um, yeah, cause like I mentioned, like I had, um, what is this, yeah, there's like that huge gap in skill with people in Celestial, and I'm like, I should, um, um, I usually play ranked off stream, cause it's, uh, what's it, um, I don't, um, uh, I don't consider myself a toxic person, but when I play things competitively, things I I feel like I become a bit of a different person, and I don't really want to do that. <laughs> that makes Fair. sense. But I do record my sessions, but I don't have my mic on because um, yeah. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. So I do. Um, it was hard for me to watch my replays, but like I wanted to keep them so I could kind of like learn from them. Analyze. And um, I do play. Yeah, I need to analyze and actually. Okay, I have to tr configure the dummy to do this and like how do I deal with this pressure? Blah blah blah. How do I punish this, etc. Type of thing. So it was useful for me. Um. Yeah. Like um. My um. Oh yeah. I have a uh, other gen mate. That I'm very good friends with. Um, is that Axi Axi uh, uh Axi underscore A zero uh Kieran Gill uh Kondo VT and Duo K Dross. Um, I they're like my gym mates and they've been like um my mate like my inner friend circle of like um VTubing since I started because I figured um since I already have like other close friends from my artist circle who want to be vtubers i figure why don't we all collab and debut together so uh, like debut around a similar time so i figure since we're all friends we already know each other it's good to have a support group instead of being like uh an indie per se but we are still indies it's just more like a fun group to have like a support for like streaming and understanding because um well yeah that um, helps out a lot mm. It definitely helps to have other people like who do the same thing. Well, we are we are all hobbyists, but um, hobby streamers in that regard. But it's very nice to have like a social friend group who's like, yeah, we can do a thing together if you want to, and like if you ever need like help with blah blah blah. Because I feel like with so certain troubles that happen when you're streaming that are very specific to streaming in particular <laughs> yeah mm. so if you want i want it if like if anyone else needs to vent about it or like hey can you help me i have a I have like these weird bots like please help or like um this person blah 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 um this person is show for a collab uh can, can you fill in the spot it's always nice to have like people to rely on to talk to about stuff like that um yeah <laughs> that's why like um i'm really grateful that i actually um found like my inner friend circle through that because um i was always like hmm do i seem like unapproachable <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. okay let's yeah see. Mm. No, let's see for me um ever shove or temporarily stop playing a franchise for an extended period of time um Franchise specific? I oh, would yeah. say, yeah, there is. Huh? Um, not even just like a break from fighting games. I don't consider that like oh. um, stopping playing a franchise for an extended mm -hmm. period of time. I would mm -hmm. say, um, shit, when did I? Oh, yeah. I, wait, 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 wait. I need to get this right. Um, 
Marvel vs. Capcom and Street Fighter. I did stop playing that franchise for a while. Because, like, I played Street Fighter V on launch and I refunded it mm -hmm. for 30 minutes. Uh oh. <laughs> because the systems of that game were just garbage. Ah. Uh. It was garbage. I'm not gonna go into detail because I have done that several times. But TLDR, mm. seven frame input delay in a 2D game. Why? Oh, um, that sounds rough. Yeah. And then Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, enough said. Enough said. So I stayed away from those franchises for a long time. And I, I'm just like, how is it that Mortal Kombat 11 is a better fighting game than these two? How? <laughs> Yeah. And, um, I just focused on other fighting games instead for the uh, for the fighting game itch, I would say. Mm. And um, yeah, I think that's the longest I haven't played um a frat a fighting game franchise in general because mm. I don't know. I think whenever I start a franchise, I generally get the sequels unless I have a really good reason not to. Uh, like, I'd really need a good reason not to pick up, for example, Street Fighter VI, but I have no reason to not. Um, mm -hmm. I have so many reasons to not not pick up Street Fighter VI. They have been, it, like, uh, words. Uh, <laughs> so far, all of the shit I've seen about Street Fighter VI has been like, yeah, get this game, get this game, get this game, get this game, man. I'm gonna get it next year when it releases for sure. So yeah, um, I've actually never got into Street Fighter, so I'm really like interested as like um, I guess most like being mostly like a person who plays Strive. A lot of people who played fighting games before me are like, it's like watered down Street Fighter. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> um, if you want my advice, mm -hmm. wait for Street Fighter Six to release. Mm hmm. Even if Street Fighter V goes on sale, don't. Mm -hmm. You're just better off with Street Fighter VI. Okay. <laughs> mm. Not taken. Yep, that's my advice. Mm. Okay. Um, next question. So, in the franchise you've played the most, I'm gonna mm -hmm. assume this is Guilty Gear, have you ever mm -hmm. missed a title in that franchise ever since you started? <laughs> I think... I I think there's so many other games they have, but I heard they're sh they're not very good. <laughs> mm. But like, um, I would um, I guess so. Yeah, since I started with Strive, I kind of went backwards, <laughs> and I tried like Rev Two and then Accent Core. I actually um, I was uh talking in a uh, another friend's stream because um, my friend uh Karen Gill. Um, I talk with her on stream a lot. She uh really likes Muso games, and she's like, "You should try this Guilty Gear game. It's like a Muso game." I'm like, "Oh, oh my oh. god, Guilty Gear! <laughs> yeah, game? It's Guilty Gear Two Overture." <laughs> I didn't even know about that. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like so. It's like a Guilty Gear game that's not a fighting game, but it's like a Muso. Like a Muso like RTS game. Oh my I'm like, what God. the heck is this? And I'm like, yeah, look, I, I found it here. You should check Man, it out. Dice you should play it on really, screen. Dice Vision like, really be working numbers. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Um, I had like someone else tell me I'm like. Hey, there's a Guilty Gear Pachinko game. You should play it on stream. I'm like, well, how am I supposed to play it? It's literally on a Pachinko machine. You think I have money to import a machine? <laughs> That's <Love>. not happening. <laughs> Alright, give me, give me like a mi half a minute. I'm just gonna refill my water. Oh, wait, actually, um... Yeah, wait, just okay. give me half All a right. minute. I'll just refill my water. Okay, I'll just uh I'll just keep talking about like weird, wacky, goofy, guilty gear games. <laughs> no worries. But yeah, yeah, there's actually a guilty gear pachinko, and I thought it was like a joke. And I'm like, how am I 
how am I supposed to actually play this? Because it's like, apparently, Daisuke Ishiwatari. Oh, wait, Daisuke Ishiwatari is like the guy who mostly made Guilty Gear, the, like all the directing stuff. Oh, hello, welcome back. And all the music for the game, and it's like, Pachinko. How do you cram lore to a Pachinko game? What a mad lad. <laughs> who does this? Well, the funny part for me, just thinking about that Guilty Gear Pachinko game. Like, I remember the absolute blasphemy that is the Metal Gear Solid 3 Pachinko game. And I was heavily insulted as a Metal Gear Solid fan. When I saw oh, that no. one of the screens, like, when you win, mm -hmm. we grant you the title, Big Bonus. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You're gonna desecrate the title of Big Boss by calling it Big Bonus? Why? Good lord, no! And, like, I can only imagine how the fuck are they going to, like, coin words from Guilty Gear into a pachinko machine? Like, I don't know, like, burst, <laughs> slash. <laughs> I don't know! Better hell! Let's rock! Oh my god, that sounds so. Did the pachinko have count? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> that sounds cursed. Uh, I don't I don't get it. I don't understand Japan staying with like a pachinko exclusive games. It's uh I, I don't know, it's interesting. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Oh yeah, but yeah, anyway, speaking of your question, but yeah, I have not played all the Guilty Gear games. Mm. I've only played I went from Stry, I went, I like, my my little, like, when I started, I played Axel Card Physical Cabinet, and I only played fighting games at a very casual level, but then, um, I got into Stry, because someone gifted it to me, and then someone gifted me Rev 2 with all the DLC, and then I actually found it very fun, and very solid, and I liked it quite a lot. It, it had a lot so much more style and charm personality. And the music is fantastic. I mean, all guilty as like someone who really loves metal music, I feel like Guilty Gear really like hit that um hit that margin because I always loved music my whole life and I love metal music, so it just it just really clicked with me. I mean, it's <laughs> kind of like the, the style charm and the music really sold me, especially. And then mm. I tried played Axe and Core again, like mm. on PC, and I was like, this is so fun. I love old fighting games, <laughs> and I wanted to go back since I'm like I want to go back and um try doing like fight aid and playing like more retro fighting games. I've never really had the chance of playing because um um I always try to keep like um my gaming experience very open minded. I always want to try try different things that people have like uh appreciate fun appreciation and nostalgia for and try like I want to know why they think this game is great or what what they find it charming or like that i can appreciate that more modern game titles don't have hmm. Mm -hmm. and like i mean well in i mean <laughs> in addition to that like there's also mm -hmm. there's also the fact that um Playing previous titles, like I said, really makes you appreciate what you have now. Mm. Like how the game has changed, how it has evolved. And of course, to tie in with what you said about you liking music, I mean, we all know the meme. Wow, Daisuke <laughs> released a $60 album with a free game in it. <laughs> That's literally... I, That's I thought it was a joke, but it really show. is but fantastic. It really is. I mean... I love it. The <laughs> video game character lore in the... Uh, fighting game character lore in story mode? No, we don't do that here. Here's the character lore you need all you need. I'm like, that's a music track. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's all it. you it's need very, to know. It's very integrated into the it's game. Very and I yeah. really love it. Hmm. Yeah. I was like, I love metal music. I love I love I love this I love these bands. <laughs> he makes references to and like a lot of the moves, I'm like, this is so like goofy. And this guy this guy's totally like I was a, a like a Westaboo. 
Yeah. And it really shows, but it's like, I kind of love say, it. I would say a lot of fighting game and Japanese developers are Westaboos. I mean, mm. look no further from Geese Howard. <laughs> look no further from oh, Geese yeah, Howard. Um, I was like, um, <laughs> I did, um, a EVO, as a EVO watch party with a couple of friends. Yeah, I, I, I um, saw that. Like, oh, you, yeah, I got, I'm not gonna lie, I got super, um, emotional watching it mm. uh, near the end but um uh fi feelings sentimental feelings aside i was the first time i watched people play tekken 7 mm -hmm. and i was like oh wow this game is hype as hell oh my god <laughs> yeah um yatra you know what mm -hmm. i'm attending as a participant in rev major it's the oh. biggest Tekken tournament in the Philippines. Oh. I'll do my best to record footage of the crowd there. It's nuts. I mean, oh. there is a reason why I think Harada mentioned once his favorite crowd, I think, is the Philippine crowd. Because we treat pools <laughs> like it's Grand Finals. Oh, oh my we god. We treat pools like it's Grand Finals. And one story we had in Rev Major 2019 before um covid we had arguably the best player from japan nobi and we had a local participant i think he's like only a teenager maybe even younger he his handle is son of nobi and the tos were like we gotta capitalize on this shit we need to have both of them on stage and the thing is even the commentators um I think it was Markman and Tasty Steve. They were in with it. They were with it the whole time. I mean, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, when Son of Nobi did beat Nobi once in a round, we were cheering the hell out like he just won grand finals. And when Nobi <laughs> got the grand finals, Tasty Steve was like, he beat his own son to get here. It's, it makes some noise for Nobi. I'm like, <laughs> He beat his own son to get here. <laughs> oh we, we just ate that shit up. We ate that shit up so much. That sounds so... Oh my god, that sounds so amazing. I love that everyone played along with the yeah, joke. Yeah, everyone did play along with the joke. Oh my god, that sounds so fun. I, I, um, as someone who got to find the games during the pandemic, I definitely want to go to like... um big events for fighting games and go to my locals because it seems like such a fun way to like um... i mean honestly i want to attend evo at least once mm. even if it's just as a spectator like i don't mind i just want to go there at least once I was, yeah <laughs> I, I was like uh i really would love to um meet up with um other people that oh, yeah, i play fighting games great. with as well so i was like could you imagine uh, i also you... have other um I think we have a lot of mutual friend friends, but I also have other people from um, Southeast Asia who also play fighting games that I would love to meet with. That's me! Almost. <laughs> yeah. That's me. Yeah. Yeah, so I was like, oh, I really actually would love to um, try to save up to go to like Evo, Evo Japan. Yeah, that'd be great. Next year. I would love to, um, I want to do like the generic vtuber meme thing where we all hold our phones and we have our models and we met up <laughs> no, yeah. i mean we could even i would say but, but could you imagine if you go to an evo and there's like a demo for tekken 8 and then tall 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 blonde guy with glasses right next to you and you realize it's fucking max dude like, oh, 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 the fighting game guy <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <It's so laughs> oh my god, you say that because it's so funny. Because uh, I, it's so weird. Like since I got no fighting game so recently, it's like, wow, Maximilian dude is so cool. And then I actually like check him out. I'm like, oh my god, this guy's like a fighting game boomer veteran. Oh my god, and yeah, I just like thought right. about him like recently. <laughs> a lot of people relate. To what he says about fighting games because he he can really uh speak for i would i would say all 
um, I would say all members of the FGC. The hardcore, the midcore, the casuals, the veterans, the boomers, the newcomers. He can speak <laughs> for all of them. So, yeah. Uh. Great. Let's see. Uh, for me, franchise that I play the most, have you ever missed the title since I started? No, I have not. I started since Tekken 3 for Tekken. I have not missed a single Tekken title. That includes Street Fighter Cross Tekken. I have played 3, 4, Tag, 5, 6, Tag 2, 7, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. I have not missed a single one. And I wouldn't even say it's because like those games generally generally have been great, but like I don't know. Like when you start a game, when you start a fighting game franchise, you just want to see what the next iteration is gonna bring to the table. Hmm. True. So like I would say, for example, if uh, Yatra like played Plus R, she's like, and, and her friend gifted her Stripe. Of course, she's like, whoa, okay, now I really want to play this because like. I had experience with a title in in the franchise, and I want to see what the latest title has to bring. You know? mm. So yeah, I that's basically <clears throat> one of the mindsets I think of um, people who don't miss a single title in a fighting game franchise. It's not even because, like I said, because they are generally good, but it's also because we want to see how the fighting game evolves because it's part of the process i mean um street the uh, tekken 3 is different from 4 5 tag tag 2 6 7 it's always interesting to see how the game changes and how it evolves and that's why we really do our best to like if we have this one franchise that we are loyal to in my case tekken and yatra's uh guilty gear more often than not, we're gonna get the next iteration of the title. Okay. I def yeah, mm -hmm. I definitely will. I'm, I'm very... It, it's interesting because I went backwards. <laughs> mm. Instead of going forwards, but... I really... I don't think we'll make another game after, but... I don't know. How are they gonna outdo themselves? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. Because Thrive still looks like... I know um, Strive is great. So we'll see how they uh, how they address it because there's still a lot of problems with Strive that I think they can fix with, if not a patch, a new title. I honestly think they can do that because like Tekken Five and Six had a problem with damage. Even for a Tekken game, you were dealing way too much damage in those titles. Way too much. And 7 kind of fixed that until the wall combo meta was a thing, and then they nerfed that, so yeah. I think with Strive, currently, um, I think a lot of players don't like the fact that Gatlings are so restricted. They're not free form as they used to be, like in Plus R. And yeah, Strive damage, enough said. <laughs> strive damage. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It, it is, is problematic. A bit, That's why a bit the short weird. time that I was able to play strive plus which is a mod for guilty gear strive i played it with chaos i played it with senna mm -hmm. it was so fun because even with chaos's pot i was able to interact with chaos several times i'm like this is so fun like i can gatling out of anything just about anything into anything and i have some old kit old moves from uh, previous titles for my characters that mm -hmm. translate really well into, into Strive. So I'm like, damn! So yeah, see, like, not all the changes were in Strive were great. Like, they did make sense, but again, um, not many people were fond of it, but like, Strive Plus basically balanced it out. For example, they did not give Milia her DP, but they gave her back her pin attack, which is a really good Oki tool. A combo ender for Oki. And I'm just like, wow. Makes a big difference. And of course, damage scaling there was actually balanced as fuck. Like, fighting soul, big damage characters like soul, 
but now go were not as frustrating as they were uh, as they are now so more interaction baby oh i feel i felt that with mock <laughs> I know, right? Nago is just one of those characters that uh, every time I have to fight, you I'm hear just that like, counter, oh. and you're like, "Okay, I'll <laughs> go." Uh, you finish the combo, I'll just, I'll just uh, bathroom break. Okay? <laughs> you got this. Okay. You got this. Yeah, that's a real move. <laughs> you hear oh, Nago counter you, you're like, "Okay, I'll put my controller, my control, uh, my fight stick down. I'm gonna just go get water. Come back for the next round." <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, uh, maybe I won't be as, uh, maybe I have a little bit of a chance to whiff Tanishi this time, but yeah. we'll see. And then, like, <laughs> people might argue, he's called a one-shot for a reason. I'm like, are, if you are bringing logic into this, why is it that Happy Chaos and Biken are not one-shotting people with their fucking gun? <laughs> Uh, you tell me, you like buddy. <laughs> you tell me if you're gonna bring logic into the fighting, into a fight. He's called a one shot. If he's not one shotting people in a in a in the game, it doesn't make any sense. Happy Chaos barrages you with his two pistols. How are you still alive? Or I don't know. Heavenly Potemkin Buster. All the way to the skies, your spine should be in pieces like it's a Mortal Kombat fatality. You can't- don't- <laughs> don't launch it with me here. <laughs> I actually really agree with you like, about that. <laughs> right? Like, come He's on! one shot, he does not have a gun. <laughs> but this damage output is a <laughs> Right? Right? Uh, and I'm like, I... uh, again, Heavenly Potemkin Buster on someone as tiny as May. I'm like, how is she still alive after that? And you're like, oh, he, he went easy on her. Did you see the impact of the animation when he hit the fucking ground? I don't think he went easy on May. <laughs> I, don't I don't think, think so. <laughs> I don't think this. Uh, duh. So, May yeah, should just... be in a coma long enough for Johnny to come back. <laughs> Anyone who gets Heavenly Pot Mustard should be in a coma long enough for a DLC character to come back. <laughs> I would say. So, yeah. Nago gets Pot Mustard, coma, and then Slayer is back. Kai gets Heavenly Pot Mustard, Dizzy comes back. That's how it should be if we are talking logic here. <laughs> <laughs> My god. This is like, it's so, uh, it's so ridiculous, so like, um, so I, I, even though I find, like, lots of character matchups difficult, I still, um, have to accept it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Until the next balance patch. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Penultimate question for part one. Yes, we are just about done with part one. Um, have you ever tried to convince your friends to get into the franchises that you play? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I have indeed. But, um, the <clears throat> thing that always comes back is that the game, fighting games are not cheap. They're very, uh, pretty expensive. <laughs> and, um, I would love to, uh, also, um, I would like, uh, crossplay. Um, a lot of fighting games don't have like, um, and it's like, it's funny. Oh, I, I, we both mutually play Fortnite. Um, I do, I, I don't get why like some games have cross play in enabled, but like with certain fighting games, they don't. <laughs> yeah. So I do have a friend, um, she's here. She probably knows it's her. She has... <laughs> Guilty Gear Strive on her PS5, and she's been waiting for crossplay, and it hasn't came out yet. But crossplay, I think, is going to be next month. But then I told her, I'm like, you should still start playing because, oh, excuse me, you should still you should still start playing so you um get to uh experience the game. But then it's like, why is it like with fighting games crossplay and like oh back neck code is like. 
it's not already implemented. How come I can get into like a match of like Apex Legends with my friend who's like from Australia, my other friend who's from, from like some like uh Malaysia and we can just play fine mm -hmm. <laughs> and it connects. <laughs> I I am sort I'm sort of like wondering like uh what um if they're not like thinking of like an international fan like inter international people who play or like I don't I'm not I don't know. It feels like they're a little behind on like making things like work, cross play, have good online network should yeah. play with people, have good matchmaking, um, you know, you get ranked. A you know, laundry list like... of things, but I think the yeah. one of the most important things right now is crossplay. Mm. Like, Definitely. How is it that, again, like, just based off my experience with Fortnite, I'm able to play with Skull and Cell, who exclusively only have a console to play shit. And I'm like, why can't we have this for fighting games? Or at least exactly. multiplayer games? Shouldn't yes, multiplayer it's... games in general be crossplay? I like... I definitely agree. I just feel like it's crazy because I'm like, why is Fortnite is, you know, that game, but it's like that they were <clears throat> smart about having crossplay and it's cross saves and like And Street um... Fighter Six confirmed that there is gonna be cross play? I think. Mm. Yeah, they did oh, confirm that some like, good. make that a new standard, please. So yeah, mm. it should definitely be an industry standard. I it feel like for game devs, I feel like I don't know why fighting games in particular are still like behind, behind. with the even FPS, way behind. Even FPS games have been adapting crossplay a lot. I actually think that's very good. <laughs> I think that should be a thing, cause like it there are people who yeah. should be a standard, yeah, cause people and it's like not even like but Yoko mouse and keyboard advantage over controller in FPS. <laughs> Brother, do you think I care? I just wanna play with friends who don't have a PC. Literally, yes. I just wanna play with people, cause like I do. Yeah, like not everyone plays on PC. Sometimes they're like, I only have like this console. I want to play with you. I'm like, yeah, crossplay should already be a thing. <laughs> it should be a thing for multiplayer games when it is applicable. So yeah, fighting games for sure is a no-brainer for like crossplay integration. Like that should really be a thing. Yeah, and, I definitely I mean, think it that it would make matchmaking lobbies definitely a lot better. I am looking at you, Dunuf Duel. <laughs> yeah. Got I, blue. I definitely... Blue had a viewer. Who mm -hmm. had to like open rank Q? He ended up fighting Deity. I'm like, oh dear, that's like celestial levels, I think. And he's a newcomer. What? I'm like, oh my god, because that's, that, how... that's how bad matchmaking is in DNF Duel right now. Oh my You're god, you're better off just playing open rank instead. And I'm like, oh no. Oh no, that's not. Yeah, because like uh, I think like matchmaking is so important in fighting games too. Definitely. It's def. It's like <laughs> at FPS games, it's already like yeah, you'll be matched with similar people of your level. Yeah, well, not makes just sense. that, but like FPS games are a lot more accessible as mm -hmm. a genre compared to fighting games. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. the only thing you need to train. Or the most complicated mechanic in an FPS is literally aiming. That's it. Yeah, aim, aiming, aim, you and point at the head. You don't Click. have to think about is my opponent plus? What's my opponent's mix up? What will they do on Oki? There is none of that in FPS, but in fighting games, you have to think about what your opponent is doing on top of what you as a player are doing. In FPS, you only have to worry about yourself. Like, can I aim at this guy? No? Okay, I'll wait behind cover. I'll wait and see what happens. In fighting games, you're like, wait, this is a bad matchup for me. <laughs> so how do I deal with this uh, matchup? Let alone, I don't know how this player plays. I don't know if they are defensive or aggressive or if they like to zone the shit out of me. Like, there's just so many layers to a general fighting game experience compared to an FPS experience. Oh, I definitely agree. There's some, like, <clears throat> the f I think that's part of what I found fighting games so engaging. After yeah. like, um, 
since I didn't play them that much. And I was like, wow, there's so much, like, things I have to, like, learn. I have to, like, um... For a while, a lot of, like, uh, fighting game terminology kind of went over my head. But the more I watch, like, stuff about it, hear people talk about it, the more it started to make sense on me. Because, mm. um... So it's like, there's like so many factors that I have to consider, and then I'll just play like a fighting, I'll play like a FPS. I'm like, you know, I could be getting better at this game instead of playing this, <laughs> where I don't, it's less engaging for me mentally. <laughs> Fair. Well, for me, have I tried to convince friends to get into a franchise? Um, well, that's the thing. Most of the people I try to convince to get into a franchise mm -hmm. are people who have had a background to fighting games. Ah. Uh. Because it's a lot easier to convince someone who has had some experience in a fighting game to mm. play another franchise than it is to convince someone who's new to the genre to even touch a fighting game. Because, uh. like, again, mm -hmm. like, I've mentioned this before. Um... Fighting games back then were still very niche. Everyone had a console, but not everyone had the time or the means to go to an arcade to play a fighting game. And not many fighting games were even available on console. At the time, only Tekken was the most popular um, console fighting game. Even the term console fighting game was a thing. That's how very niche fighting games were back in the day. But now, fighting games are so mainstream that anyone who's been in the industry for so long are just eating really well right now. Because there are more people who want, who can get a fighting game regardless of what platform. And there's so many fighting games releasing right now. And they are now appealing to a wider audience. But despite that, it's still very difficult to, like, um, in, uh, introduce someone to play a fighting game when they haven't played a fighting game as much as you have or as much as anyone has. Mm. And I think more so than any genre, any multiplayer genre, fighting games for sure has the oldest um, community. Mm, By true. far, I think. It has the oldest community. Definitely. And that is why you have this dichotomy of, like, yeah, I'm, I'm experienced at fighting games, and then you meet someone like, say, Daigo or Alex Valle, and you're like, never mind, I'm a baby. <laughs> like, they've, yeah. they've been learning frames and combos while I was just eating cereal in the morning. <laughs> just, to, <laughs> just to put that into perspective. So, if even a veteran like us can feel that old what more the ones who are learning fighting games right now <laughs> right very mm -hmm. it's a, it's it's a whole new world it's tough yeah so i think it, that it, like it, uh... it, 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 it it's gonna take a big effort to um ease them in because if there's one thing definitely that fighting games as a genre describes it pretty well intimidating Mm, it is definitely. very intimidating. <laughs> it's very, it is very intimidating. It's one of the few genres where the elite outlast the new, even though they don't outnumber them. Like in FPS, for example, the casuals and the newcomers for sure outnumber the elites. But in terms of like longevity of how long they play. They are pretty much close to each other. But when it comes to fighting games, the elite have been playing for so long that a newcomer that just tries a fighting game will already feel that huge gap. Like, for example, um, when I used to play Rainbow Six Siege and I see people like Shroud, Bolo, I see how they play. I'm like, there's no way I'm getting... I'm getting to their skill level, but I think I can get close to that. I think I can get a bit close to that. Different story with fighting games. I see I see me, JDCR, Arslan Ash, I'm like, I'm never getting on their level. It is impossible. I am never gonna get on their level. I'm not even gonna try. 
<laughs> I just can't. I, 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 I have, I have surrendered to this fact that I can't get to their level. <laughs> and My I don't God, know. It's a yeah. bit. It's, it's the one comfort I have. I would say it's the one comfort mm. I have. Like I know my limits. I know what I can't do and cannot do. But that is a unique trait to fighting games that is very tough for a newcomer to deal with. And that's the thing. Like I am by. N I'm not by any means a newcomer, no, I'm very experienced in fighting games. But if we were to teach this to um, newcomers or even people who are just remotely interested in fighting games, yikes. Ugh, it's not the most welcoming genre, I would say. Because um, in addition to what I said, um, like from the outside of fighting games looking in, um, I would def definitely, if I wanted to convince someone to, like, play a fighting game, I would wait for them to be curious or interested. I would not out of the blue. Like, if I met Yatra for the first time, and mm -hmm. she had no experience in fighting games, I would be like, Hey, you want to tr have you ever tried Guilty Gear? Guilty Gear Strive? I would not do that, <laughs> no. If she was remotely, like... Like, wow, this game looks cool. What is this, Guilty Gear Strive? Then I would like, oh yeah, you should try it. It's a fighting game. It's really fun to play. Like, that's when I would chime in. But I would not, like, introduce it as a topic out of nowhere. Like, hey, if there is any game genre I would recommend, it's other multiplayer games or other single-player games instead. Not a fighting game. It's not easy. It's not easy, like introducing it to a newcomer who's not even remotely interested and not mm -hmm. intimidate them that is the tough part about fighting games how about you yatra yeah <laughs> this is like uh, uh yeah it's really hard to convince other people to play it because then like i i when no when i started i was like um I don't think I'll be like a pro, but I have fun playing it, and that's enough for me to keep going. <laughs> and it's like, when I try to uh, get other people, I have to the I don't they, I pl I'll mention I played a lot, and I'll mention a lot of terminology, and then it's like... Um, i never really been picky with games, so with other people, it's been a lot harder to convince them. So, it's like a lot easier to convince other people to play a game that's free <laughs> than a game that costs $60. And that maybe too. if it goes on dirt cheap sale, maybe I'll, maybe I could try to convince them to try it. For the most part, it's like, um, um, a lot of my, like, other non-streamer, like, uh, non be like, non-streamer friends, like, Momi is like, are you really like fighting games? Are you good at them? Like, no, <laughs> mm -hmm. I am not. <laughs> I'm like scratching that surface of like understanding them and such, but it's still like, I still think it's fun and I would like to um, improve and get better. And like, sometimes you, I think you mentioned it before, like you get to points where you plateau and you're like, okay, well, I'm about to figure, figure stuff out, but it's definitely like, um, hmm. Um, it's like, such as a particularly niche thing, I try not to push it onto people unless they have some interest in it. Yeah. Cause, cause, uh, I have, um, some people who are like, oh, does it have like this archetype of character I'm very specifically into? And I'm like, no, but it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, it doesn't, um, I guess so. Uh, I think it's his, uh, yeah, I just like, uh, ca very character specific type of things, but it's like very hard for me to get other people unless they're like already kind of into the genre. But I have other friends that their first fighting game is also Strive, but they also want to try playing other fighting games and like kind of like branches out from there. Hmm. And I'm like, why well, me too? <laughs> you want to play this fighting game? You, like, we can try that out together, type of thing. As well, um, I don't know. Fighting games are just like that type of thing, mm. and it's like the people who still play competitively, I think, is like more than 
the newcomers that want to try. So it is very intimidating, but I still think it's like, um, once you start, they're very engaging, and I think it's like worth putting the time into playing, for sure. Oh yeah. But it's still hard to convince it people is hard as much as I try. <laughs> hard thing, you know what's harder than convincing? Mm -hmm. Having them stay. Oh, yeah. oh you forgot to. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Having we them didn't... stay. That's oh, a tough that part. is. That is. That's tough actually part. true. That is a tough Having... part. Yeah. Yeah, the initial interest you think will be enough, but like I mean, having them... There's a reason why they call it the honeymoon phase. Whenever a new yeah. fighting game comes out, the honeymoon phase. Mm. Okay, um, that is the end of part one. We're just gonna have a brief like five minute intermission. Now for those who want to ask us anything related to the topic, please don't hesitate to ask here on the Twitch chat. Um, we do have a question from Skull very interesting question if there was a fighting game crossover you want to happen what would it be i think i think i said this before i think i've tweeted about it but i want a, a fort i want like fort like guilty gear <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely ridiculous but like the truth is, there's already Street Fighter skins <laughs> I, I, in I Fortnite. I can't it, imagine, like, <laughs> while well, you you hear Soul Bad Guy, Van Brit, like, before he can say Bandit Brigger, Kai just points a shotgun up person and shoots Soul out of the sky. <laughs> <laughs> That's so hilarious, and it's so on brand for... It's so on brand for Fortnite. I or, think it being so great. Or, you know, you see Kaido ride the lightning and then Jack O sidesteps and then whips out the heavy sniper rifle. <laughs> oh my, what machine do you And then default dances on front of, in the front of Kai. <laughs> I love that shit. It, I it's such it sounds so cursed, but I just feel like it's so on brand with how ridiculous Fortnite is. is with the collab. But not and I'm honestly, like honestly, the fact that they added, I'm like, Arcs, yeah. I need it Arc System Works and Epic, hello, like can you talk to each other? Your game is very commercially successful, you know, we can get this happening. <laughs> Like, honestly, <laughs> if they made a crossover, could you imagine if they added the Kamehameha, or sorry, I'm saying it wrong, the Kamiyamama, uh, oh and the Nimbus oh. Cloud as mythic items that you can use? And could you imagine if you could use Junkyard Dog, that's Soul Sword, and um, Kai's um, weapon as well, and you can do like some of their moves with it? That'd be pretty cool. Oh, I would love it if I could get like the Thunder Seal Sword and then like shoot them at a sh with a two like a two like a shotgun. <laughs> I mean, like you have the lightsaber. You have Darth Vader's lightsaber. You can mm. block bullets with it. You can throw it like a boomerang. It comes back. So I'm just like, yeah, I can imagine like someone picks up Junkyard Dog and if they right click and then left click, they'll uh, do they'll freaking do um. Uh, what's the projectile of soul? Uh, what's it? Is it? Is it a, a Grand Viper? <laughs> no, 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 wait, wait. It's a project. I was gonna say Stun Edge, but that's Kai. Nah, that's Kai. <laughs> I forgot the name of the projectile for soul, but basically, yeah, soul's projectile. Gunflame, yeah, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank gunflame. you gunflame, like right click to aim gunflame, and then left click to bring it out. And if you press and hold left click, he'll do Volcanic Viper. What? <laughs> DP. Oh, my if you, if oh you hold God. left click on Kai, he'll do his <laughs> DP as well. That's so... I would love it. Vapor Thrust. <laughs> vapor Thrust. Vapor th Yeah. And if you, oh if you tap left click, it will do um, a close slash, far slash into... Um, stun, uh, stun dipper combo. And if you jump and do left pick, it's gonna do Sheikah's favorite move as Kai. Oh, 
Foodra. Foodra Ark. Foodra. <laughs> Foodra Ark. <laughs> that would be so or, funny. Or, or, or talk about this or I want this. <laughs> I don't know, right? Like, this is such a great... I mean, we already have Street Fighter, which is like a very prolific fighting game crossover in Fortnite. Yeah. You know, we can just get more. We like, get more. I don't yeah. We can always get more. Let's see. For me, crossover? Let's see. Fighting game crossover, though. Mm. Let's see. If I were to crossover fighting games, I would say... I don't know. I, like, Street Fighter Cross Tekken was a thing. Poorly implemented. But it was a good idea. It was a very good idea. Because they use weapons, and I want the character customization and creation of it, Soul Calibur Cross Guilty Gear. Oh my god. Could you imagine Nightmare going up against Soul? That would be pretty cool, I think. Hold on. I and for up. people are like, but what about people like Jam? She doesn't have a weapon. I'm like, guys, did you forget that Heihachi was a character in Soul Calibur? They can make a way for it to happen. Biken versus Setsuka. Yeah, exactly. Aster <laughs> Astaroth versus Pot. Kai versus Raphael. Yeah, that would be cool. And more importantly, the character creation. I want to see that. <laughs> just oh to God. insult, just to like piss off Shika even more. I would put Kai's outfit on the chip. Because in Soul Calibur, you can put like, for example, you can put Taki's outfit on top of Cassandra. Or you can put Cassandra's outfit on top of Setsuka. So, yeah, could you imagine Soul with Jacko's outfit? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that sounds so... <laughs> exactly my point. Could oh, you imagine about Soul about with my... Jacko's outfit? What? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my Why god. Why not? I'm, Why not? I'm kind of... This is... I love how this became, like, cursed ideas. <laughs> First ideas, nah. First fighting <laughs> busy with Kai's busy outfit. With Kai's outfit. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, I'll do you one better. Kai with Ramlethal's outfit. <laughs> oh my god. I've seen a mod of that. I need oh that. My... I need that. Alright. <laughs> oh okay, that god. is the end of the intermission. We're gonna head on to the last part of the talk. This is going to be the meat of the topic now. So, we'll start off with what is your favorite and least favorite title in your favorite franchise? Uh, uh least favorite? Yeah. <laughs> I only played like three of them. Um... That's fine. Um, I think, hmm, I think you'll probably be Axe <laughs> Core. Axica, oh. I feel like the boomers, the Guilty Gear boomers are seething, but I just don't like the concept of uh, unblockables. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I don't like. Um, so, um, I'm still like, since like, I, the concept of like Gatlings and learning combos is still very like, um, new to me, and I'm still like trying to figure it out, but I quite like how freeing it is but it's just like um the, i don't i don't like the idea of like i think it, it's kind of like it with like a lot of fighting games but there's always like sort of like that one character you have like issues with and it's like um but yeah, i'm so sorry what was the question <laughs> your favorite and least favorite title in your favorite franchise ah okay all right yeah so i guess it would be accent court in that regard but i think i Personal favorite is probably like, I guess, Strive because I put the most time and effort into playing it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, um, I guess it's a bit of a side tangent, but like, um, I made so many friends and I've reconnected with like old friends I haven't talked like talked with in a long time because they were interested in Strive. So it's um, 
it's like it's the friends i the friends i made and reconnected along the way so mm, like sentimental like, value that's it yeah the sentimental value i've gotten from this game i've uh it's quite like i don't know i don't know if there'll ever be another game that kind of you know like reconnected me and connected me to like other people in Calling this it way now street fighter 6 <laughs> it's gonna be street fighter 6 <laughs> We'll see. We'll oh, see. that is possible. See, yeah. Okay. For me, let's see. Favorite and least favorite title in my favorite franchise. Not counting Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Because that was on the Capcom side of the project. So it's considered a Street Fighter title, not a Tekken title. Um, Favorite title for Tekken in general? Honestly, it's not even Tekken 7. I would say my favorite was Tekken 5. Tekken 5 was my favorite because, like, on top of, like, a really good roster, although the balancing could have used, could used some fixing, the character customization in 5 was way better than what we have in 7. 7's character customization is disappointing. Unless you have mods. Um, also, um, Tekken 5 had... A more traditional story mode for Tekken and it was really fun because every fourth match you had a special match with a character that's more connected to your character so for example for Law for example in Tekken 5 your fourth match will always be against Paul because he is involved in Law's storyline which makes sense but um, Tekken 7, it was more unorthodox. They focused more on the Mishima storyline, which is good. But in return, the rest of the cast just got shafted when it came to like... Okay, who are... Who do they have a close bond with? And I'm just like... I honestly can't, uh... Say because they poorly implemented it on this one. And again, people can fairly argue, you care about lore in a fighting game? I'm like, there are people that do, yes, there are people that do, because it's still very interesting. When you have unique character interactions, like, you've seen those videos on YouTube of, like, um, character intros of, uh... A mort of Scorpion and specific characters in the Mortal Kombat cast. It's just cool. It's just cool to see. Even though you're you're probably gonna skip it after watching it several times, it's still cool because they went out of their way to implement that, you know? And it's so weird when like Paul and Law They don't even have a unique intro in Tekken 7 when they fight each other. I'm like these are like, sure, Paul is more best buds with uh, Law's son, but they are still like very well acquainted. Th this, it's so weird when I don't, when there's a lack of interaction. And if there is a lack of interaction, the one area where you can go to is the story mode. And even that was shit for the rest of the cast. So again, there, I'm like, ugh. But not to say that Tekken 7 is my least favorite. No, actually, my least favorite, I would say, actually was... Uh, I, I would have to say 4. Four well, Tekken 4 was my least favorite because that game was broken as shit. And the tier list was literally this. Jin, Steve, everyone else. I'm not even kidding. That was the tier list for Tekken 4. The balance was way out of, like, left field. You were either either... Whoa. Not either. <laughs> you were either playing Jin or Steve, that's it. In, like, a serious competition, you were playing either Jin or Steve. There were no in-betweens. Just because of how busted they were. Now, the mechanics they did introduce in that game were very interesting, but the one major flaw for sure was the uh, the balance. And, ugh. It, I mean, balance is... 
is, uh, I would say it's in a weird spot in Gilding Gear Strive right now. <laughs> yeah, so, I yeah, kind of agree. It is, <laughs> I mean, like, Nago, Nagoriyuki did not need a buff. Somehow Daisuke's vision said, we need to buff Nagoriyuki. No! Not even the Nago mains need, said that he needed a buff. They're not gonna, they're, hey, they're not gonna... Look a gift horse in the mouth and not say thank you. Thank you for giving us buffs. No, of course they're gonna say thank you. But even the most dedicated Nago players are like, we didn't need this shit, but thank you. I'm just like, why? Arc arc system work balancing is weird. Arc that's system why w works in mysterious ways. Uh, that's right? why when I went back and played like uh, was that Rev Two? It's mostly a Finnish game, but then it I is. realized like if I get good at this game. It's not really gonna change. <laughs> also, um, 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 can I can I bear it back really quick if that's okay? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'll bear it back. Angie and bike and stuff. And biking and Angie. Well, Angie has the bigger booba, so I think the outfit will fit. No problem. Fun over balance. What? Blaze Blue director said this. Like, again, not wrong. But Soul Calibur, I think, is both. It's so fun, and oddly enough, it's balanced. Oh, okay, hi, I'm back. Hey. So. <laughs> All right, next question. So, has there ever been a franchise you've always been interested in trying, but you couldn't pick it? You couldn't pick it up due to whatever reason. It's it's kind of funny. Uh, I think um for me, I've been kind of interested in other like anime fighters because I just I like anime. I always wanted to try um melt. Uh, I think under Night and Birth in a uh, Melty. Underlies um, the curse. <laughs> Under night, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause uh, I feel like um, a lot of the character designs seem like I don't know. They seem like things I would make <laughs> as an artist. <laughs> but like, uh, I don't actually know much about like about it other than like oh, these characters look really neat. They're like things I would draw and make. <laughs> so I found like. I found it very interesting, but it's like, uh, I never really picked it up because it's like, I don't know much people that play it in particular. It doesn't have, um, I don't think it has like net code. I think it's delay based too, so it might be a bit rough. Uh, for Melty type, I never, I never, I never watched or read Tsukihime. <laughs> I don't think most people have who play yeah. Melty. <laughs> yeah. I don't think most of them know either, and I'm like, uh, I do, uh, I do like, um, uh, Fate. I do like the Fate series quite a bit. Um, so when they introduced, like, characters I thought I knew or were more familiar with, I was like, oh, these are neat. <laughs> I like this character. I'm like, I don't, I feel like most people who play Melty don't. 
really know either. But like, um, I know there's like, uh, for those, uh, for a Melty in particular, I know there's like a very like, uh, dedicated, diehard fan base for it. Mm. But for you, for, uh, is it Eunice? I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's like, um, I think it's more like when I see other people play fighting games, they're, they're other ple- they, they would either be playing like Melty or like older Melty because they don't like blah, X, uh, certain blah 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 system mechanics. I liked how it was in the, the older titles, blah 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 type of thing. Hmm. Mm. But yeah. Well, for me, uh, regarding just to add to what you said about Slumber Night and Earth, um, the reason why I won't get, <laughs> I won't ever get into Underlies the Curse because I. The title just is so stupid. <laughs> I just find it really dumb. <laughs> you just I, think it's I can't. I just can't with the title. <laughs> Even though, like, a lot of people have said, it's such a great fighting game. Yeah, but I'm, like, you can call me petty. And you can call me, you can say I'm missing out. And I'll admit to both, but oh my god, I am not getting into a game called Slumber Night in Earth. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I can't. <laughs> and I don't know. I if there's one other reason why I'm, I'm just so insulted by the fact that that title wasn't even released yet, hmm. and it was in an evil main stage. I'm like, why? Why is this a thing? It ain't because... even out yet. It could <laughs> flop. <laughs> Keith, Mighty Keith's uh, skits, uh, skits memes aside, I'm just like, there are a lot of things you don't do for EVO, and that's one of them. You don't just put a freshly released fighting game into the EVO main stage attraction. Because <laughs> it comes out like they made this game just so that they could package it for EVO. And I don't like that. Because that sort of uh, sends a, a weird message to the player base. Like, there are more people that watch EVO than who actually participate in EVO. Mm. Thing is, it's EVO. It's not like watching a fighting game. Watching EVO and watching a fighting game are two different things. Because in EVO, you see the elite of the elite duke it out in EVO. That's what makes it so exhilarating, so exciting. But when a new game comes out, it's interesting watching people learn it, you know, make mistakes and just try shit out. But when it's at EVO, I'm like, wait, what? Are you telling me that this game is marketed towards the hardcore? Then if it is, then I'm out. Yeah, because like, when you think about it, it's like, usually people who play competitively at that level, they need to take time to, like, learn the system mechanics, hone their skills, learn combos, learn yeah, Gatlings, because... learn, learn, Oak, learn Oki, learn frame data, what's plus, what's minus, and then if the game is just out, I'm like, the game's <laughs> you're gonna just figure out, like, out. People are going to discover infinites and bugs, and then patch them out, and then make it for EVO. Could you imagine if if Beta Guilty Gear if Beta Guilty Gear was what they had for Evo where Souls Wild Throw dealt as much damage as Potbuster why would you even pick Potemkin when Soul Bad Guy exists pretty much and a lot of people even Max dude admitted that everyone like Soul bad guy evolved in Strive, nobody else did. That was beta. I'm like, yeah, good thing they didn't launch that shit for Strive. I should say the same with Tekken 7. Absolutely! Absolutely, I agree. As a Kazumi main, Kazumi was so fucking broken in base tech in base Tekken 7. Your esports button was down forward one, a very fast mid check that for some reason reached way further than the animation. 
And the hurt box is on the animation, by the way. Her hand. So technically, you could poke with it, and if people tried to poke back, they wouldn't hit you, but you would hit them. Because it had a disjointed hitbox for some reason. So yeah. Really fucking dumb. Um... But yeah, for me, like, for a, f uh, a franchise, I've always been interested in trying to pick it up. Let's see. Uh... Hmm. I feel like... Um, I wasn't... For, since I, I'm so... Mm. New oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, um, I'm not gonna say... Un I'm not gonna say Under Lies the Curse, because I was never interested in that title. Akuma was also... Yeah, Akuma was the problem with Tekken. Um... For a franchise that I've always been interested in, but I never, like, could get into it, um, I would probably say Killer Instinct. I've heard a lot of good stuff about Killer Instinct from uh, Roa and Blue, especially Blue, but I just can't get into it. I do not like the art style of it. It just feels a bit off. And that's the thing, it's not even the fighting game mechanics that turned me off. I'm just like, there's just something about the art style that just doesn't jive well with me. Mm. Um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, the franchise that I've always been interested. I have been interested with KI, but I just can't get into the... the uh, I can't get into the title because the art style just seems way off for me. Like, it's it's kind of like if someone was interested in Marvel vs. Capcom and saw Marvel vs. Uh, and they saw Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Nah. <laughs> like, there's just something off with it. <laughs> but I feel I like just... it's, like, visually not very appealing either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say that. Yeah. Alright, uh, next question. Why do you think there are sequels in fighting games that don't always do particularly well? Alright. <laughs> this is the one the this is one of the questions I was looking forward to. Uh, yeah. Oh, do you wanna do you wanna share your thoughts first? Um I think you should start. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking, I feel like um I'm oh, sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> um, why do you think there are sequels in fighting games that don't do particularly well? Oh, sequels. Okay. I feel like... Hmm. Is this a, is it, I feel like BB Tag is kind of like... One of those games. I feel like... The con... I think, I think the conflict with that was like... A lot of the... So this is supposed to be like a tag implemented games. You had to buy like DLC later to play the characters that you're interested in. But I feel like as a concept, since um like a tag game, like tag games in particular, you should be able to like play um like a I played Marvel Capcom 2 on like physical cabinet, but I never really got into it. I feel like um I think uh, it's like a certain niche for like t t tag or team games. You should already have a lot of the interesting base roster included. But I realize like season, there's like the season passes and like uh, battle passes and such to like have more people like get more characters and invest in the game. But I feel like I feel like the game was kind of failed to launch <laughs> mm. in particular since like they hid a lot of the characters you were expecting under DLC. Um, I'm not sure at the time. I think at the time the game came out too, there wasn't much of like a... I'm not sure if drought is the right word, but there's like not many like tag tag or team fighter oriented games that come out. I know um, I think Marvel's is... I feel like the people who were like Marvel vs. Capcom type of series kind of went to uh, DBZ Fighters, but there's not like um, not many like team or tag oriented games. Like it's mostly like one on one with you and a character, and you kind of have to like um, have like mastery over one of them. Um, let's see. 
<laughs> I think... Uh, I feel like... With, uh... Is it Marvelous Capcom? I feel like... There was another game that sort of... Like, after 2, there was another game that launched, but I don't think it was... I'm not sure how popular it was, other than the hardcore niche. I think MVC3? Yeah. Mm. I did play MVC3. It was great. Was <laughs> I'm not sure if it was, like... I think it had, like, a very uh, dedicated niche, but it wasn't, like, as well, popular as... What threw people of... off about MVC3 is that Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was going to release half hmm. a year after. I'm like... At a discounted price, at full price. Ah, uh, I think that's what it was. God <laughs> damn it, crap, calm. <laughs> It was something similar like that, and I was like, wait, what is- wait, why'd you- this is so strange. <laughs> Type of thing, but yeah. A lot of people do was... not like it. I, I didn't it a... like it. Yeah, that seems very- not Mario- yeah, that seems kind of scummy, not gonna lie. <laughs> it is. It um, doesn't seem scummy. It's... It is scummy. It is scummy. I think those are the only two I can think of the top of my head. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, why do I think there are sequels in fighting games that don't always do particularly well? All right. Um, this is usually because not because the game itself is bad, but because the game they envisioned, the devs envisioned, is not the game that the community wanted. I honestly think. And um. Like, I'll give an example. Soul Calibur 5. There were returning rosters, and that's the thing. That word. Returning rosters. That is very important for a fighting game. If, if a title in Guilty Gear did not have Soul and Kai, like, what the fuck? Like, what the actual fuck? That it's wrong. It's weird and it's wrong. And even for like Tekken, even for Tekken, like, yeah, we're in this. We don't even know if Heihachi is really dead or not, but he has to return as a playable character in Get Ready, even though it doesn't make any sense because he is just way too iconic. It's just way too iconic. And in Soul Calibur V, so many returning characters were shafted, and I'm like, it, why? Like, one of the biggest contentions was uh, Cassandra and Sophitia, none of them made it. The two Cassandra sisters, usually if not one, if, if both didn't make it, usually one did. In five, neither came back, and thing is, they are fan favorites. That's something you just don't do and think it's a good idea. And you look at Guilty Gear Strive, like, there's so many characters that haven't come back, but the fan favorites are still there. And let's tackle the elephant in the room, or should I say the two elephants in the room, Biken. Um, mm. Biken has always been a fan favorite, and she is in the game, albeit DLC, but she has returned in Season 1. Which is good. But the, the returning roster is like one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest uh, things that a fighting game player always looks for in a sequel. They need the, if not the entire, at least a huge chunk of the returning roster back. And in Tekken 7 in particular, you have two cases. You have Master Raven and Josie Rizal. Master Raven's kit is practically the same as Raven, but a few more ninja-like moves. Which is why that's totally fine. Totally fine. Josie, however, was a mix of her own unique style and Bruce Irvin's style. And people didn't like the fact that she was basically a discount Bruce. 
while Master Raven was just a reskinned Raven, but they are practically the same character. They would have preferred if Josie was similar to Master Raven, where she had Bruce Irvin's moves, at least a lot of them, and on top of that, her unique, uh, her unique, uh, move, move kit, move list and kit. That would have, what that would have been fine. But she didn't have that. Like, she had some moves of Bruce, but she didn't have the iconic ones. And um, that that's just on the fighting. That that's just on a specific like roster side. When we're talking about gameplay, look no further than um, I would honestly say Street Fighter Cross Second. Now it's not exactly a sequel, but it is very Street Fighter in nature. So. Um, I mean, Tekken Tag 2, I would say, is still a sequel to Tag and 6 because it came out after 6 and it's very, it's still the core Tekken mechanic. The reason why Street Fighter Cross Tekken was so bad was because of the stupid gem system, which was basically pay to win. And why is it? Because this was in the Crapcom era where DLCs were actually like in the disc, but you paid to unlock it. And some of these DLCs were an insult because um I'll ask Yatra. Yatra, what's your favorite single player game of all time? Um single player game. Persona. <laughs> Alright. What if I told you that in per persona what? Uh Persona uh three. <laughs> okay. What if I told you that Persona 3's true ending was locked behind the DLC that you had to pay? I, I, <laughs> God, that made me so upset. <laughs> exactly. And guess what? Asura's Wrath, which was a Capcom single player game, the true ending was DLC. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> yes. Oh I don't know God. why they decided that was a good idea. And. I am going to say that exact same line. I don't know why they thought the gem system in Street Fighter Cross Tekken was a good idea. Now, how busted is the gem system? There are some gems that do like you deal bonus damage and counter hit. Um, your launcher uh, has new properties, etc. Uh, your DP loses invincibility frames, but um it deals more damage etc something like that um thing is there were some broken ass gems like you break throws you you will immediately break out of a throw once per round i'm like what i i basically do nothing and i can break out of a throw and for those who might not know, especially Tekken players, why is that such a big deal? Breaking throws in Tekken is easy. Not in 2D games. Breaking throws in 2D games, it's almost it almost has to be frame perfect. You almost have to do it at the same time that your opponent inputs the throw. It's practically a hard read. It's not something you react to. You read it. It's a hard read. And with the gem system, you didn't need to do that anymore. So it was a pay-to-win system. So you have on one, you have one reason out of many reasons. You have one reason where the game that they envisioned is not what um, is not what the huge chunk of the player base wanted, and then you have another where the game systems were just not conducive for either fun or competition. Which are two key components of a fighting game. It has to be fun and competitive, but more importantly, fun. I don't think it's fun that the fact that all Yatra needs is a gem and suddenly I cannot grab her on Oki at least once. That's not fun. That is one word. And yes, it is bullshit without the blazing. <laughs> it's bullshit without the blazing. Uh, that's, that's the best way I would have said it. <laughs> it is. It is. Now... 
So mm-hmm. scummy. It, 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 <laughs> it doesn't sound. It is very scummy. And as Roa said, yeah. a lot of competitive games in Street Fighter Cross Tekken ended in timeouts without gems. So I'm just like, that just goes to show how important gems are. And thing is, you had to pay for this. Now, as a tournament organizer, to balance it out, what you would do is that you would need a machine, a console that had all the gems, on top of having all the DLC characters, or you would just ban gems altogether. Which you would be like, why was it even implemented in the first place? Uh, Next question for you, Yatra. So... Do you think fighting game sequels should be treated or developed the same way non-fighting game sequels are made? Or do you have other thoughts on this? Mm, like, I feel like, um, I feel like, a, like, um, a hurdle with fighting games, I think, uh, they, for tutorials, they should be, like, more organically implemented to the game, I feel like. Like, this should be a nice little fun story you play along that teaches you the mechanics of the game as you, like, kind of feel like you're progressing. So I feel like, um, a lot of, uh, fighting games, they don't have the best type of, a uh, beginner I tutorial agree. lesson. I agree. As I feel a like Tekken player, the a, severe lack you know, of a tutorial is a major sticking point. Yeah, I think, um, especially if you want to try to... As a developer, you want to, I mean, like, I assume, like, uh, investors, too, like, want to have the best product for the consumer so they can uh, make profits back. And so I feel like having a good tutorial system that makes, that engages the player and makes them interested in learning, like, the game is very important. Um, I also think um, tutorials, I feel like it should be, I'm not sure how to keep certain players engaged. I know some some other like like a uh, Apex or Fortnite they do like weeklies and dailies, but um I'm not sure if that would work in a fight. <laughs> like maybe um I feel like maybe um I remember I don't know the tutorial. Keep... I remember yeah. the tutorial of mm-hmm. Guilty Gear Strive. I watched I watched Unagi play through the Guilty Gear Strive tutorial, and I'm like, I skipped this particular tutorial, but I did go through the other, like, new mechanics that Guilty Gear Strive had. But, like, the fact that that was there, it's a good entry point for newcomers. But sadly, there are games like Tekken 7, there is literally no tutorial, and I'm like, why? (laughs) How? (laughs) Yeah. I feel like, um... Oh yeah, yeah, um, also speaking of that, I feel like, um, single play, like, uh, fighting games, I feel like a lot of the engagement comes from playing with other people online. And I feel like for people who, you know, um, there's like some kind of weird stigma where, well, I have to learn my character in training mode and learn all my Gatlings, learn all my combos, learn all my setups. I'm like, no, just... I mean, that's also important, but like, you ha- the most important thing I think is just like playing online with with people and learn. <laughs> I feel like um, the idea of just like only spending time on training mode and then like I feel ready to to actually fight other people. It's like, nah, um, you need like human interaction experience with another player <laughs> because yeah. even if you play. Like, um, I don't know. We'll just use Guilty Gear as an example. Like, even if you play Milia and you main her, you'll play another Milia who plays completely different from you, and you, they have something to offer that you can learn from, like, a mirror match that you wouldn't get from just fighting a CPU. <laughs> um, I think, uh, um, also, I think, um, I think more, um, fighting games i know arcade mode is like a usually like a staple but i feel like there should be more like interesting engaging like um things you could do like um played like a 
I think like an older Blaze Blue. I think it was like I played Continuum Shift, but like I liked about the game. There's like um things you could. It was more like a VN into integrate into a fighting game, right, and then you can yeah, like play that. the story modes, and then you would do a bit of completion, and then you'd be like, oh, there's certain parts where you can. You win this match or you fail this match, you'll get a different interaction. And then, like, you have to, like, go through every character. And there's different, like, little fun cutscenes. Some goofy... Some goofy lore. I'm like, oh, I have to help this girl find her cat or whatever. Like, <laughs> small things like that that make the characters feel more, um... Uh... Alive and engaging, I think, is really really nice to have in like a fighting game because there are people who just kind of want some more story integration more things mm. like guilty gear stripe just has like a it's okay it's a free album and also just comes with a free 3d anime <laughs> mm. which is very neat but like you could it could be like packaged in a way where it's a bit more engaging where like you go through this arcade mode and then you watch this cutscene type of thing blah 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 and no, uh, I do realize um, when I actually went to go look at the credit for the credits for the animators, it's like four people, which is uh, very small for an animation team. <laughs> yeah. That's extremely small and they're very on a budget. And that's like um, uh, for like animation, that's quite a lot of work. And um, I think I think I think I looked into it a bit. The people who did that don't have experience with animation, but they tried with the best they could with the four man team. That's like pretty impressive. There are some parts where I think they really were trying, but it's like this is kind of rough. But like um, they were trying to work with what they got. Um, also, I do. Um, um, so uh, engaging, more engaging story based like tutorials, more single player contact, and more. Um, I think there should always be like a casual, a uh, uh, casual online play mode. I feel like that should already be obvious, because <laughs> mm. um, uh, not everyone wants to play. Not everyone wants to play online and play ranked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Having a built-in casual online lobby, I feel like should be. I mean, obvious. You look at it's... you look at Smash Bros. as a franchise. Mm -hmm. They've had a lot of solo player content on top of multiplayer content mm. you need that balance mm. even in a fighting game like sure people can argue but yoku he actually smashes a party game like yeah i i get it but the community has embraced it as a fighting game and mm. as much as nintendo's ninjas may want to Nintendo don't them to oblivion. It's not gonna change the fact that the community has accepted it as a fighting game for better and for much worse But Aww. that's the reality that Smash Bros is in no, And as a developer mm -hmm. you have to stay in touch with your community It's not like you cannot release Smash Bros as a party game, but you have to realize that there are a good number of people that will see it as a fighting game as well. And, of course, you cannot please everyone, but you want to please as many people as you can. That's just good business practice and good business sense. Like, of course, you cannot please the entire market, but you need to know what majority comprises of your market and try to please as many of them as you possibly can. And that is something that you can do in more conventional fighting games. You should realize that especially now, while fighting games are still niche, it's very mainstream for a niche genre. There are so many, the casuals, like yes, the casuals and the newcomers will always, always, always outnumber the veteran and the hardcore players. Let's accept that as our reality right now, whether we like it or not. Per me personally, I love it. I love it that the fact that there are more casuals and more newcomers than there are veteran players. How do I know this? Look at the sales of Guilty Gear Strive. When was the last time that a very niche very like 
I wouldn't say unpopular, but like very cult following popular fighting game like Guilty Gear Strive actually celebrated 500,000 sales within its first months of release as a fighting game. It's really rare. And you it's not the pros that you have to think for. No, it's the casuals. Because they made it a lot more accessible for newcomers and casuals. If anything, the first people that tried to turn down Guilty Gear Strive were the veterans. When Daisuke said that they were going to... Um, when they were going to... Uh, change the direction of Guilty Gear in Strive to be a little bit more accessible... A lot of the players who were veterans in Guilty Gear in general immediately said, "Oh, this game's gonna be trash." They're pandering. They're pandering to the casuals, and sensible. Yeah, I'm calling you guys out. Sensible people like me are just like, "How do you guys even know this? The game's not even out yet. There's not even a beta. How how do you know that the game is objectively trash? I would believe you more if." like if there was a beta for me to test and you know share my thoughts on but we didn't even have this before but guess what the game is out and it's so fucking popular it is the most played fighting game on steam only next to tekken i think but even like in terms of peak players i think guilty gear beats tekken even and that's, again, for a title that's very complicated and has a niche following. Guilty Gear. Not many people know Guilty Gear before Strive, but those who knew of Guilty Gear, like, hoist that title like it's a, like it's a fucking, uh, like it's a holy grail to them. Rightfully so. But you have more mainstream titles like Tekken, Street Fighter, Smash, like, yeah, everyone knows that those are going to sell well. But no one expected Guilty Gear to sell well in this regard. And, again, this is because they realized that, one, fighting games is in a new state right now. It's very mainstream. So, they'd be... It would be a missed opportunity if they didn't even if they didn't at least try to appeal to a bigger market, which they did, and again I sound like a broken record right now, but it's so fucking successful, it has sold a lot. And this is where you cannot treat a fighting game sequel like a conventional video game sequel. You look at You look at Call of Duty. Call of Duty since Modern Warfare hasn't changed drastically. It honestly has But people still buy... It still sells millions of copies. Like when it, within its first week or even first day. Why? Because it always appeals to the market. To its player base. If Persona 6 released... And it was still like that same Persona game every every Persona 3, 4, 5 fan love. They're gonna buy it. They're gonna buy it. No questions True, asked. <laughs> no questions asked. Persona is already very popular on its own. If people just saw Persona 6 and they're like, oh wow, I can already see elements of my favorite Persona game. They're gonna buy it. Whenever people see trailers of, of Call of Duty, they're like, oh man, this reminds me of... Uh, uh, Modern Warfare, yeah, day one buy. And these games ain't cheap, $60, they are still fully priced, they'll still buy it. But in fighting games, it's... it. The fighting game community is a very tough crowd to please, I gotta say. Because the crowd right now... Is... Is mixed. You have a large number of newcom newcomers, but also a large number of... Hardcore veterans. And fighting game developers have to try to please both, and both have different views on what a fighting game should be. Like, you have the mentality of I didn't pay 60 bucks to I I didn't I paid 60 bucks to press buttons. To have fun. That is fair. 
But veterans would also say I didn't pay sixty. I didn't pay sixty dollars for a broken, unbalanced piece of shit game. That is fair. That is absolutely fair. But again, this is why making a fighting game sequel is a lot. It it takes. It's not even like development wise. Um, budget heavy, I would say. It is more on the conceptualization of a fighting game sequel that's tough. I think that's the tougher part. Like, you can say, what graphic style, what soundtrack, what roster, what new mechanic, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, sorry, not mechanic. Um, what platform, what, um, crossover potential, whatever. Yeah, that's fine. But it's the game, game itself that the players will play that is a lot more important than whatever innovation you can do for that game, in my honest opinion. And this kind of ties in with, um, technically, like, question 10. What makes a great fighting game sequel? And, again, I'm going to use Guilty Gear Strive as a, an example. It is a very good sequel to Guilty Gear XR Revelator 2. Why? Well, for one... If we're gonna analyze it, I don't want to take too much of Yatra's time because I'm pretty sure it's getting late over there. Wow. But like, um, even though it's Friday, um, <laughs> I like think of it this way: um, in Guilty Gear Strive, we already know that yeah, it um, it appeals to a larger market. Yeah, it's more accessible. Um, yeah, it, it yeah, today is Friday in California. Um, <laughs> yes, in California, yeah, yes. <laughs> um, on top of that being very accessible, so it has a larger player base, um, a lot of the characters have basically been hyper-focused on their kit. So not everyone has a DP for the sole reason that Daisuke wanted the characters to be specialists in their own regard. You still have people like Soul and Kai who can do a lot of things. They can zone, they can rush down, they can grapple, uh, they can mix, etc. You have people like um, Pot and Anji who are very defensive. Um, Pot being a true grappler um, just deals big damage in a short amount of time. You have Anji who is a very like mix neutral based character you have people like chip who, and milia who are basically we don't do the best combo that we don't do the best damage in combos but our main source of damage is resetting our combo damage for unscaled damage by opening your defenses up so that is why they removed some moves for characters because they had a very good concept for character design in Guilty Gear Strive. They wanted characters to be specialists in what they do, which is fair. Of course, you have problematic characters like um, Ram who are like, wait, they're not... How is Ram like a really good zoner but a really good rushdown despite having like big swords that, to be fair, are quite sluggish but somehow she can pressure someone to the wall, at the wall, to oblivion, to the point where, oh, look at that! I have meter and you have full risk. Haha. <laughs> so yeah, of course it's not perfect, but the concept was still there. It was very well implemented. And of course, you have the magic word that I mentioned earlier. You have the returning roster. Like the clear, like iconic characters of the series did return even in the base roster of Strive. They did introduce newcomers like uh, Nagoriyuki and Giovanna, but majority, of course, like the majority of the returning cast did return. Or sorry, the majority of the main cast did return in Guilty Gear Strive. That's what everyone really would say is what makes a great fighting game sequel. You look at Tekken, which has been repeatedly being praised for having a good launch roster a very big launch roster like strive i think launched with um how many characters was it 12 15 i think i think it was 12. <laughs> you think your strive launch roster was good 
15. Oh, it was 15. Okay. 15 base roster. Second 7 base roster. Second 7's base roster, 36. 36 characters on launch. That's a lot. So you want the roster also to be like very chunky. You want more options. You don't want a very small roster of like 10 characters to choose from in a fighting game. That's just way too few. Because there are so many characters to choose from means that there are many uh, fighting style preferences that can be fulfilled. Like, I personally don't know what Yatra's uh, preference in gameplay is, but the larger a roster is, the more chances she will find a character that fits her playstyle. That's why I am glad Deccan always has a large roster on launch, is because on launch, I am more likely to find um, a character that fits my playstyle than I would in other fighting games, to be honest. And lastly, what makes a great fighting game sequel, I would say, is that it's not just change, but change in the sense that it evolves the franchise. If you look at Tekken all the way from the start until now, it hasn't changed drastically. You still juggle opponents, it's still footsies based. We just have evolution of game mechanics like combo extensions with bound or tailspin. And then they added the Rage mechanic in 6. And then Rage Art and Rage Drive, which is basically supers in 7. It has evolved, but it didn't drastically change Tekken. You can still play Tekken 7 like you did Tekken 3 or 4. Or even 2 for that matter. It's still the same game, it has just evolved. It's different from a game changing. Now, by definition of change, I would probably say, um, I think one of the most drastic changes in any title is every Street Fighter game is a big jump from the previous one. Street Fighter 3 is completely different from Street Fighter 4. Street Fighter 4 had two gauges. Yeah, the super gauge and the ultra, yeah, the ultra gauge. The ultra gauge did not carry over per round. The super gauge did. But the Ultra Gauge basically was filled by taking damage, and the more damage you took, the more that gauge fills up, and that gauge can fill up to about 50%, and you can use a soup your you can use your ultra combo. But if you let it fill to 100 percent which means you'd be almost dead, that ultra combo, that ultra would deal even more damage than it would if you could use it right off the bat. And then you have the focus attack mechanic, the focus attack dash cancel, the four finger mechanic. Like, there's so many new mechanics in four that weren't even there in three. And then in five, there were no more focus attack dash cancels. You had V trigger, you still had super. Uh, <laughs> there's just so many changes in four and five and in Street Fighter that these aren't evolutions, these are complete changes. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing, but um, when you implement changes that drastic, it has to... how do I say? It has to push the game in a forward direction. I wouldn't say like it changes the direction of a game or a franchise, but it should push it forwards, I would say. Like, sure, it can slant a bit moving forward because of how weird or how drastic the changes are. Like, of course, Tekken 7 having 2D characters like um, Eliza, Akuma, and Geese. Like, that's very weird. They have meter, which no one else does. But it still evolved the series. But for, tech, uh, for a Street Fighter, it's a drastic change per title. And I think 6... I think 6 looks like... Um, an evolution of three but again it's way too early for anyone to say but i'm still very optimistic for it but generally like in my opinion this is the hardest one to pull off a good fighting game sequel should evolve the game not just change it that's basically my take how about you yatra 
Oh, <laughs> I don't have such a strong opinion, but yeah, I do agree. <laughs> when the system mechanics of the game are too drastic, it's just like, um, wait, like it become it becomes more like a juxtaposition than more mm. like moving it far in a good a good way. Like, but like mm. trying to strike the ballot, like trying to figure out like how to do that, it's like kind of, probably like. I don't know. A lot of things to consider. And also, like, you also mentioned, like, Strive appeals to, like, a more casual audience, but it's, like, also a good thing because that's, like, that's the people who will play your game. <laughs> yeah, because that's... competitive players are, like, they'll always jump ship to the next competitive fighting game. Mm -hmm. But a casual player doesn't have dedicated money for another fighting game that's coming up they're usually gonna spend it for another genre of games something else other than video games because they are casuals they are they are the ones that will most likely stay so you want them to stay but yeah like if i were to use guilty gear as an example for change versus evolution like the the gatling system it was more of an evolution than a change because that was the direction that they wanted to go with Gatlings. They didn't drastically change um, Gatlings in the sense that you can't Gatling anymore. No, of course, you can still Gatling. But you cannot Gatling out of every move into every other move. That's the one like thing that they changed about it. Like, it still feels... It doesn't feel... Um, Sorry, wait, I'm looking for the word. Okay. It doesn't feel... Um, it doesn't feel alien as a concept. Guilty Gear Strive Gatlings. But it just feels new. But something you can get used to. An idea of what a drastic change would be versus evolution is if they... If they added a new attack button. Or they removed dust, for example. I'm like, wait, what? Why would you remove dust? Which is a new a universal like uh a universal overhead for just about everyone in the cast. Because there are some characters in Strive that have other command normals that overhead, like Milia's 6k. That is an overhead. Um, but not there are characters that don't have that. All they have is dust. But just imagine if the next Guilty Gear Strive title, instead of dust, that's just throw now. They just remove dust altogether. Like, hmm, strange. That's a change. I don't think that's an evolution anymore. That's a change. Because dust has been a core mechanic of the game for how many titles in the franchise. You cannot just remove that or you cannot just drastically change it to the point where it's not the same thing as it was before. Because you can still say that Gatling and Strive is kind of similar to the one in Plus R. It's just not as free form. But it's still the same nature of... It still embodies the same nature of what a Gatling is. So yeah, basically, Yatra and I are on the same wavelength where... Yeah, a great sequel for sure for fighting games is that... You want a good returning roster, obviously. Yeah, and, I feel like that should be super obvious and, <laughs> and not be paid DLC. <laughs> yes, please. And of course, like, um, not drastic change, but for sure, like, evolution of a game is much more conducive, I think, to newcomers and veteran players if it wasn't just a complete change. Alright, last question, finally. So if you could change a video game entry in a franchise, what would it be and how would you change it? This one, I'd like to know. Video? Huh. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Wait, can you- sorry, can you repeat it again? <laughs> oh. If you could change a video game entry in a franchise, like how its core mechanics are or its roster, etc. What what video game franchise? Uh, what fighting game entry would it be, and how would you change it? Ah, uh, interesting. <laughs> I feel like um, I think I mentioned it earlier. I feel like 
the concept of like as a guilty gear overture true is very interesting but i just i feel so out of place with everything else because it's always been like a like a fighting game but mm. i feel like the concept of like turn-based combat rts kind of muso is a interesting concept <laughs> but the execution is like huh <laughs> This doesn't like, feel like a Guilty Gear game. It yeah, it doesn't like, feel like a Guilty Gear game. It's basically a feels Musou like game a... with Guilty Gear characters. Yeah, it's like a Musou <laughs> with Guilty Gear. But I, I mean, like, I don't... I feel like as, like, a... Like, a, as a way as, like, Im to implement it is very... The concept is definitely different and interesting, but it doesn't really quite fit. But the... I feel like with trying new things on, like, a franchise, like, making, like... Like, um, I, I have very, I have very conflicted feelings about, uh, Riot Games. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think they, the fact that they, with, I do have to give them, um, with League in particular, they make different side games, like Runeterra, and, like, um, they release, like, a separate, like, Tale of Kings game that was entirely different from League, and it's its own self-contained game. Yeah, yeah. I think... Doing that is actually, like, I think it's really good. Because it makes them, like, they expand their existing story and their lore. And then they kind of branch it off into a different product and its own thing. Because mm. if you buy that game, you're not expecting it to be like, hey, who's jungle, who's top, who's, yeah, 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 who's league, sure. who's ganking, and blah, blah, blah. It's its own self-contained game and has its own, like, set of uh, rules to it that, that are applicable to it. Um, so I feel like the idea of making like spin-offs or like separate games that are based on an existing franchise can be done right and done wrong. <laughs> Essentially, I feel like I think I don't know what Dice Gaze Vision was, but I, d I feel like he could have done it better. And if I have to give Riot credit for doing it in a way that's actually both engaging and enriching to its lore and also gets like a another genre like other branches off to other genres um um i think that's, i don't know if i have any other stronger opinion other than that <laughs> mm. that's fair that's a, yeah that's a very good point <laughs> that's a really good point especially oh my god <laughs> yeah i was thinking i was like that's definitely such a different like, you can do things that are different and unique, but, like, you can also package the game. I uh, have to give Riot credit to actually, like, marketing and making the game different and self-contained than their main entry, like, their main game, which is, like, a MOBA. But you can also use the narrative and do different type of things with it in its own self-contained thing. Mm. And so have it be fun and, like, exp yeah, I just think... And then again, that's also like fucking pachinko. <laughs> like a guilty gear pachinko game, which is like oh I don't, I don't. How, how do you? How do? You, oh, how I ever? What is? I don't know the concept of a lore being crammed the pachinko game that you can only get in one way is very like not fair to like other international audience who like your game <laughs> type of thing. I feel like um. Also, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, uh, I think having different ideas and concepts could be interesting, but like executing them in a way that's like hmm. makes sense is like very kind of be a bit of mixed bag. I think Riot did a good job, but though, and they also have like a good, um, I don't even play league i hate the game honestly <laughs> but they have a good way of implementing it where you earn stuff in the game but you don't have to pay for it the only thing you have to you buy is mostly for cosmetics and i think that's like a like a good good thing because yeah. i feel like with the monetization of like most pay to win type of games it's like <laughs> i think they had a good idea going but like it's becoming a bit more uh i guess i guess predatory and like trying to and make the consumer feel enticed to buy things in the game they don't really need 
fair, fair. When fair. I feel like it should be something you can earn through mm. the game, type of, of thing. Mm. Let's see. Like, for um... me. Oh. oh, sorry. <laughs> As the thing has like a, like a covering work gotcha game addict, I feel like it's like one of those things that's like uh the enticement. I feel like. You should be able to earn things in game and playing through games, but you shouldn't. Um, things shouldn't be pay to win. <laughs> yeah, never. Pay to win is bad. <laughs> yes, I agree. Okay, um, let's see. For me personally, um, if there was a title I would change in a franchise, off the top of my head, Guilty Gear Strive. <laughs> As okay. someone who has been uh, tainted by the waters that is Guilty Gear Strive Plus, that game, that mod just made Strive so much more fun. It, Because I can interact with Nago and Pot. Like, I, there's more character interactions, there are more moves that are more, like, it it, it has good chemistry with my kit. And I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure uh, Chaos will agree, being able to air Potbuster is, like, it's just fun. Like, generally, Guilty Gear Strive Plus, like, it hasn't, I don't think... Well, I think there have been, like, Strive Plus tournaments, although unofficial ones for sure. But, like, it's just so much more fun because the Gatling system is much more freeform. There are new moves. I mean, there's a funny super for um, Nago that uses half attention gauge, so it's basically 25%, where he fucking eats an onigiri really fast. It recovers some health and it reduces blood gauge. And I'm just like, not gonna lie, that looks hella fun. And then, for example, for Melia, she has a, like, her multi hit hair move. You can cancel that into Heavy Slash, that makes it basically. It gives pushback and makes her more plus. So I'm just like, that sounds like a lot of fun, actually. And again, like the gen and you know, you can actually install a soul now. Like, of course, the animations are again modded, so it's not there, it's a bit janky, but the concept is still there. It's really fun. That's one thing I would definitely change. There, like, I mean, people can argue that the reason why soul doesn't install conventionally is because of how he has come into terms with himself being a gear and all. Like, okay, I get that. But it's still different because I'm like, I look at Tekken and I'm like, I mean, Jin and Devil Jin are two separate characters, but Kazuya can literally devil install whenever he has rage. I'm like, why can't Soul do that? <laughs> Why it can't Soul do that? And I mean, like, it's not like we have Robo Kai, but could you imagine if Strive Plus had the new, had an optional install for Kai, where he installs himself into Robo Kai? <laughs> I don't know. That would be funny. And who cares about, like, it can be like you can worry about balancing that shit out later, but like, it's fun. That's the thing. Like, balance is something you can fix. But for first impressions, you want your game to at least be fun. Because that will keep players, like, in the game. Because, like, there are only so much things you can do to change a game so that it's fun. But whenever you hit a snag where a character feels too weak or too strong, you can easily balance them. But when a character doesn't feel fun to play, that's when you know that you've hit a problem. Because that means that you'll have to like add moves or re or remove moves or change moves not even to make it stronger or weaker but to make them actually fun to use that i think is a lot tougher so yeah that's what i would do and that is it for today's episode of shrine talk again thank you so much yata for being my guest today thank yeah. you so much <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This was very fun. <laughs> I'm glad we were able to. Yeah, we we did end uh, as I the estimated duration. I'm glad. Hey, let's I, go. I, 
I didn't want to take too much of your time. <laughs> oh, no worries. Yeah, yeah, even even though fun. it's a Friday, I didn't want to take too much of your time. Anywho, <laughs> um, I want to give... Uh, I also want to thank everyone, not just from my community, but also from uh, Yatra's community. The comrades, thank you so much for being thank such you, comrade. <laughs> thank you for being such lovely viewers. And of course, uh, Skull, thank you so much for the little question that you placed for me and Yatra. Thank you so much. It was thank a good you. question. That was, that was such like a... I love the I love how we went for like yeah how do we make things better Guilty Gear Fortnite <laughs> Guilty Gear Fortnite <laughs> Yeah thank you thank you it was nice to actually uh it uh I always um due to time zones it is always very difficult for me to interact and talk so it's been very nice to meet your lovely community of Fox Rats yay, yay. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Um. Um. Yeah. Of, I'm uh, of course, I just wanted to mention for those who are new here, please mm -hmm. on the next episode of Shrine Talk, which I'm still working on, please do not mm -hmm. hesitate to ask me or my guest anytime in the Twitch chat. Um, any questions or inputs that you want us to add, we we I always uh. I always entertain those when I can or during intermission. So yeah, don't hesitate uh, to do that next time. But of course, before we say goodbye, I want to give Yatra the red carpet. Yatra, you, if you like have an upcoming stream or if you want to give a shout out, the red carpet is yours. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Um. Uh, so tomorrow, my friend Lustang, he was gonna do an all day birthday stream. I'm gonna shout out because he's cool. Um, got yeah, that permission to post link. <laughs> uh, um, shout out. Or do I have shout out? Yes, can uh, just, you shout out? Uh, yeah, Lustang just... VT. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I think I, I, yeah, I think he's I gonna do Lustang... doing a birthday stream celebration tomorrow. Yeah, there you go. Um, I, I gave Lustang uh, a yeah. uh, shout out thank a while ago. I'll, I'll do it again here. Thank there you, you thank you. Yeah, he's gonna do an like, all day birthday stream. I will be there for a good portion of the stream. Nice. Uh, if you like fighting games, uh, Lustang uh, does play Tekken 7, is very good, and is gonna hey, play yo. Guilty Gear for the first time. Uh, yeah, I'll be there. Um, um, for Mon- uh, for any- uh, my next upcoming stream, I don't have much schedule, but I will be doing a, uh, VTuber game show, uh, posted- oh, um, can you- uh, how does- wait, actually, I'll DM you how to spell her name. Uh, I will be on, uh, Manaka- Manaka Ray- uh, she's gonna do be doing like a VTuber game show wow. on Friday. I don't know what time. I think it's Friday or Saturday. It will be a um, it'll be a game show where we kind of do like Jeopardy and we uh, do we we uh, do a bunch of cursed things. <laughs> it's like a very fast paced game show, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, nice. <laughs> yes, it's very pog. Um, I think those are all the scheduled upcoming streams I have uh, planned or I discuss with other people. Uh, it was great to be here. Uh, as usual, um, on my streams, when I um, leave, I usually hit them with the bye-bye, uh, Johnny. <laughs> Yay. So I feel like it's the only fitting way for me to uh, take my leave. Uh, I post on Twitter and I stream like usually Monday, Wednesday, Fridays at six, around like 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. PST. I, it's a GMT plus 8. So we're in quite different time zones. So yeah, I appreciate you uh, coming and taking time. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just say uh, bye bye, Janne, and then you can close this out. <laughs> so bye bye, Janne. Bye bye, Janne. Bye bye, Janne. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys um, after an hour break. I'll be streaming as well today. But yes, see ya. Bye-bye. Janne. Bye-bye, Janne. <laughs>